ahead and call the meeting to order. 630. Uh, are there any additions or modifications to the agenda? Uh, I'd make a suggestion. But Brian already said Roger's gonna the uh, so they are fine, he's gonna come in. But if we front loaded any items that uh Rosemary want to be here for I'm well, gonna leave after the after discussion. Okay, you didn't want to stay for any of these uh, a separate discussion. I don't think it's a long day tomorrow. So that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Or I guess it'd be assessor and deterrent. Yeah. If there's anything that you would like to participate in, I would suggest that that be up, you know, in the beginning as well, so that Rosemary could. Do you want to be on both of those? I don't think I need to be for the insurance thing. Okay. The assessor. Okay, so we'll do assessor, then ARPA, <clears throat> then. Um, okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to move the sheriff's department up um, yeah. to be that extra. That one, two. Okay. Any other modifications or additions? Brian, there was something else. What was it? Uh, we had <clears throat> the uh, clarification on the social media policy and questions about the uh, requested posting from racial justice and, and social equity. Um, okay, no. That'll come after, that will be at a, it'll be number six, the equivalent of number six on the, current, on the uh, original list. Okay. okay. Any other adjustments or additions? Hearing none, let's review invoices and orders. <clears throat> First up, uh, Barrett Freeman, soccer rack. Is Jason is not. $132. Ben Gale, soccer rack, $132. Ben Turner, soccer rack, $140. Brasso Fuels, um, a total of $655.26 with $327.63 due from the village. You can see the properties listed, but that's really uh, total is $13,000. $13,600. That's for all of these. Oh, 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 oh. So it's way down there. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me go through them. Holcomb is $792.16. Library is $636.51. Mill House is uh, $327.63 for the town and the same for the village. Town Storage Building is $341.03 for the town, same for the village. Um, the town diesel tank is $6,337.83 for towns. $1,516.55 for village. Town Garage Heat, $2,986.72 for a total of $13,607.09. Chris Turner, Soccer Ref, $35. Uh, Roger Connor, Soccer Ref, $90. Country Home Center for Beautification Supplies, $302.52. Also, spray paint for soccer, $593.40 for a total to the Country Home Center of $894.92. Fisher Auto Parts, um, lawn and garden tube, six, uh, 742, grease, 146.67, supplies for winter parts, 500, <clears throat> use 24.54 for a total of $678.60. G and E X tin extinguishers, um, $122 for the town garage, $27.50 each for um, food shelf. So each meaning village and town. Oh, 
it's just more. Um, this is still the extinguishers. For the office building, $65 for each town and village. Library, $65 for a total of $372. Um, Griffin Pinal, Pinal, I guess is probably how you that, pronounce it, $35 for wrapping. Donna, oops, sorry, Holden Marcelino, soccer wrap, $60. JJ Keller and Associates, safety, safety training and equipment, $712.20. Um, Johnson Hardware and Rental, Class 4 ma Road Maintenance ex Excavator, $525. Uh, bike Terrain, $51.97. Uh, repair Kit for Site Maintenance and Repair, $27.49. Keys, Screws, Keychain, $12.34. Uh, table Tie Reel, $61.82. Crash Hut, $3.99. Uh, pelletized hobby tone 6288 batteries 1699 and blast cutter sealant 1243 from the town the same from the village for a total of 787 dollars and 33 cents yep you know what class four highway was working on this that might have been prospect rock but I'd, I'd have to check with jason to be sure um He's been pretty good about marking when he's working on a class four road. And I know that that was one that had had needed some work. Well, actually, wasn't that a culvert that had to be replaced? There was a, somebody had attempted to install a culvert, but the culvert but it was undersized and wrong materials. Uh, so we did have to take that out and we're going to replace it with an actual culvert. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe not in the exact same location, but okay. make some improvements up there uh, for better <clears throat> water flow. Okay, Logan Freeman, soccer ref, $132, Manash Sand, $391.09, Kyle Noose Abishan, beautification, $52.22, Pizza Equipment and Sales, Spring for Steering, $856. State of Vermont operating fee for MRGP compliance, $1,350. Sitzel, Page, and Fletcher legal service. Is that, let's go back, is that a, a fee for the? Yeah, that's just the regular permit fee. Is that an annual? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, legal services, $1,435. Still reporter, uh, equipment operator, printing and publishing, and fuel RFP printing and publishing for a total of $210.40. And that was it. Um, review and approve minutes for October 12th and 17th. Moved as presented. Question in a second. For a second out there. Second. Uh, any discussion? I don't remember which pivots it was, but did you get my email about the, uh, the ticket I got the 17th? It was for the one to the 17th. Did you get oh, oh yeah. There, there was something you said that I that I left out that you wanted in there. So yeah, if, we, if the rest of the board agrees, then I can add that in. I don't know if you copied the rest of the board on that email, but I, I saw it. I saw it. We all saw yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think the whole board saw it. I think yeah, I saw it. The 17 is, is also the meeting where I motioned the last item, not Eric. Eric didn't motion it and then vote against it. Oh, I, I, I had both names. I, I had twice. <laughs> Although we could leave it. <laughs> <laughs> See if anybody else picks it up. Right. Matt Kinney. <laughs> So the last motion was made by Evan, not Eric. So would you be amenable to the, the addition of the language uh, pertaining to the yes flanking and uh, amenable to uh, removing my name from making a motion? <laughs> I didn't say that. Okay, we have a modification. And it sounds like you seconded. Are you agreeable to that? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, have it. Select board issues and concerns. So, Jason's not going to be in tonight. Are you going to give us an update on the Viking? I can't. Yes. Okay. In, um, in the whereabouts of our grader. I don't have an update on that. Do we have? I know it's a sealed bid oh, process, okay. but are oh, we allowed to know if there are bids in for the grader? Has uh, there been any submitted? I don't have any bids on the grader. Uh, yeah, but the due date for that is still a decent ways out. Right. Uh, related, we did receive some interest and one proper bid for the fuel RFP. And we have received at least three uh, applications for the highway operator position. Was that an open ended uh, job posting or was there a uh, the end date was today. Was today. Yeah. Good candidate. Strong candidate. I believe so. I haven't fully reviewed them. I intend to do that process kind of, I suppose it's a good time to discuss it, because uh, we've got a couple new board members who weren't here when we last had a good, strong public work supervisor. The way we used to do job interviews before was that uh, I would the the highway supervisor and I would do the first round of interviews and we would bring what we thought were good candidates to the select board for final decision. Uh, but then we would do the first uh, the first round to take out any candidates that were. Are there any really objections to that? No. No. Okay. Sounds like go for it. Good. Okay. Uh, anything else? So do you do you want to have Brian do the Viking repair as part of his report or do it now or we we can just do it now. It's not on the I had it in the planned purchases, but uh, you have planned. Okay, okay, let's do it then. Let's do yep. it. Yeah, right here. Okay. Anything else? I would like to know the whereabouts of our new grader. Okay. Can you send me that? on the ocean blue? Yeah. It's no UPS tracking. Here. Yeah. Uh, okay, treasurer's <laughs> report. Oh, Rosemary, you're up. So we're going to try, uh, let me just say really quickly, I'm going to try to keep things moving. We should be really careful about having one person talk at a time, but we have a lot to cover. We don't have a lot of time and we have a busy week. So let's keep things on a roll. You could talk, please do. Just don't talk over each other and let's make sure it's worth saying. Uh, Rosemary. I don't have a lot. Um, we got the settlement from property valuation review on the self storage soup, and the new tax bill has been sent to Mike Lazar. And they agreed with our settlement agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the list I have one errors and omissions from the assessor. It's between Gary Sutton and Kip Sutton. Apparently, they missed a transfer last year they split a piece of property in 2021 the lot went from 27 acres to 10 for gary and a new lot for hit for 17 acres gary's assessments went from 231 600 down to 213,700 for a difference of 179 and hips went from zero to 79.9. There's a wash. To our good. $900 difference, it sounds like. 17,900 to 79,900. Because mm -hmm. when you, the more acres you have, the cheaper it is per acre. Do yep. we, does the board need to approve yes. that in the end? Yes. I would move to approve the errors and admissions as presented by Rosemary. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Does everybody need to sign? The whole board needs to sign. Um, do you have an update on 
the sorry budgeting stuff on the um articles the reserves and the reserve funds and the how it can and can't be applied brian was working on that yep. okay so i've i'm gonna uh email you a written summary of all of our uh all of our reserve funds uh, that are out there and the conditions for moving money into them. Uh, so you've got a better understanding of what all the different, everything that's out there. Um, Lydia helped me put that together. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, her help was, she was very helpful with that. Um, for the current surpluses, uh, we talked a little bit more about that and some of the took some of the board's feedback about, uh, you know, feeling that the tax anticipation fund was pretty healthy and interest in a couple other areas. We're recommending uh, that we keep a little, that we might put a little bit more into the budget about, uh, to cover a couple one-time expenses that we're interested in, like a, a large format printer and scanner uh, are things that would I nope. think that needs to come after we understand how, what the reserve funds are and what our allowances are for using and applying those to reserve funds. So but let's keep requests separate okay. because there's other things out there and we don't want to be biased toward one request because it's the thing we're hearing right now. Um, let's, but if we could get an update on how to use those funds, that would be great. I'll send out the current status. I also went back to the prior legal opinion that we got on how to apply. Um, a lot of that conversation was done via phone call, so there isn't a written summary from the attorney that I could. I can email you right now if you'd like. I can ask him for a more detailed email response, uh, but it mostly came through conversation rather than a written response. But our current practice for the last couple of years is something that they support, where we're, we decide how we want to spend the money, where we want it to be and write that into the budget that goes to be approved by the voters so we have the money right now you know uh, and at, at town meeting the voters are voting on how to apply it how to apply those funds yeah. okay is this answering walter's concern yes okay. i don't know if he agrees with it he won't agree with it <laughs> um he won't agree with it because his argument is that I think we've heard it a number of times. His argument is that they're giving approval. The voters are approving the budget amounts that are presented, but our position has has I think it needs to be, frankly, to operate the town is that the budget also gives us the flexibility to use those funds the way they need to be used to operate the town properly. Uh, and I think that might be where that some of the contention comes in. Yeah, uh, we have, we are definitely of the opinion that Walter's reading is much too strict about what our Well, we should say what we are in the opinion of, Thanks. but. <laughs> yeah. Which, which I think begs the question. Um, I mean, we can sit here and say whatever we want, but if we have a legal opinion, that legal opinion carries more weight than my opinion or Walter's opinion or your opinion. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I understand the hesitancy to obtain a legal opinion, but to me, the critical piece of it is, does this board have the ability to deal with surplus funds? And can we actually propose to put surplus funds into a budget line item? I think there's a couple of questions. I'd like to see what the findings are. Yeah. And I agree with getting a legal opinion after the after what your findings are once they're shared. Um, but I but I feel like there's a couple of questions like can we do anything with those rollover funds um, as part of putting them in a reserve fund? Like, does that part need to be voted on? Is my question. Does does it need to go into a voted budget? I don't know. I assume so, but maybe not. Uh, and if it does need to go to a voted budget, in that case, do they need to be spent on the things they need to be specific, or does the board have some leniency in the way that those are applied, assuming they're, of course, used for the purpose of the reserve? 
Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I, I remember the way it was done in, in the prior year, and it, you know, actually, I, I'm not, I'm not keen on that approach because it makes it look like we're overspending a, a line item basically by two and it looks out. like we're underspending in our budget yeah when we have the overage to roll over although. right so whereas we well what we used to do was to take a specific proposal and attach that to the end of the budget and the voters by approving the budget were in essence approving the expenditure of those proposed reservation of funds. Um, so it's a slightly different thing, but it, it's it's basically not running it through the budget per se, um, but getting voter approval to do it. And I think there's a number of ways that could, you know, that maybe that needs to be done in a more comprehensive way. I don't know. Um, yeah. That okay. probably is the part that is the legal opinion. But I would be very uncomfortable with a legal opinion that says that the secretary doesn't have the authority to deal with a surplus. Yeah, yeah. And I don't I find that hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get that information from you. Yep. I'll send that along in an email. And uh, if the board's willing, I can work with Duncan about. Uh, formulating the letter and some questions to ask our well, attorney. Well, let's do one thing at a time. Let's okay. get the information out to the board first. Let's make sure that the board has time to understand what you've put out and we can discuss before we ask the attorney for anything. And I'd like for us to talk about it. Questions are. Right. Okay. I'd like for us to talk about it first. Attorneys are expensive. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, Rosemary, we're still on treasurer's report. I don't have anything else. Okay. Are you good? Okay. One thing I don't want to lose track of is I think a couple meetings ago, a number of meetings ago, we asked, I think we asked Rosemary and Brian to report back to us at some point on uh, a uh, purchase order uh, system. Um, you know what it would take. I, I just I, I don't expect you to answer the question tonight, but I, I'd like it to stay on our agenda so that we don't lose track of it. I think we need to. Did we talk about that in terms of priorities? I wonder if it was on our priority list because it may have been there. I don't remember specifically talking about it. Yeah, we just kind of talked about it ger generally. I don't know if there was consensus think... that we needed to act on it. Like act on looking into it. I don't recall the board instructing. I don't either. Yeah. Let's just make sure. Well, wh whatever I have to do to put it at a board level, I would like to do. So <clears throat> instruct me as to what you want to put I, it on an agenda I need to as do. an agenda item. Got it. Okay. Yep. Check. Okay, um, review plan purchases. <laughs> Salt truck repairs. All right, so we've got two items in our plan purchases. The first is the repairs for the salt truck. So I spoke to uh, representative and uh, Viking and they are, their position is that this was chiefly caused by, the, the, the problems we're facing chiefly caused by a, uh, by improper maintenance. That this equipment needed some specialized maintenance that we were not conducting. Uh, we weren't aware of it, uh, but it was, Specific, it was the failure was due to improper maintenance. Uh, so they are not warranting. They are aware of our situation and our feelings on this. So they are willing to share some of the costs with us, uh, uh, some of the labor costs specifically, but they're not willing to cover it as warranty work. So the option that the public work supervisor recommends is. Uh, 
making repairs to the equipment that you have in place, which would be option two on the report that Jason gave us from Viking at the last meeting. Um, that's kind of the. If we if we approve, so let's say we we go ahead with option two. Are we in a position to prevent this from happening? Are we in a position that we know and understand all of the maintenance that's needed for this vehicle going forward? Yes, we are. It will be a little bit inconvenient for us to do the, the maintenance on this, but it won't be prohibited. Do you agree with them, with their assessment? What, what was Jason's response? Yeah. Jason's response was much the same that, I mean, it really is, it failed due to, we didn't do the maintenance. Part of the maintenance needs to be to raise and lower the lift, you know, a dozen times when you grease it. We didn't do that because we didn't know that that was part of the maintenance schedule. That's not in the manuals. It's not mentioned anywhere. Well, but that very much is the reason it failed is that just filling the grease doesn't circulate it through the parts. But Allegiance also made that error because we sent this exact truck to them who is where we purchased it from. And they said that they greased it properly. So maybe they need to share in the cost because of their negligence on the product that they sold. But I still can't believe that a tiny bit of grease could rip that thing apart. I think it's a design flaw, honestly. I would be inclined to agree with you that if this thing has such tight tolerances on it that it can rust up and seize in this short of a period of time, you know, I, I'm I'm really just pleased with the product, but there isn't, you know, un unless we. Now you, sorry, I think yeah. I understand what you're saying. You said that they're willing to share in this, but I don't really see where there's any sharing. I just see bids. It's not like they said it's going to be a $5,000 job and we'll split it down the middle. No, that isn't covered in the options that they, they sent us. Um, I can get a more detailed report when we have a... I can get a more detailed invoice from them that shows where they're sharing costs with us. Is this the final cost after shared costs? It or... is. The 3200 Yeah. I guess my problem with this is I don't think it's when I hear maintenance preventative maintenance being done on it, putting grease in it is preventative maintenance. Exercising the lift doesn't sound like preventative maintenance. That just sounds like operating it. I'm very troubled that less than a year old and they're not willing to stand behind their warranty. In my opinion, I, I, I believe it should be covered by a warranty issue. And, you know, I'd be very hesitant to support using them again with this. No. I think that, yeah, the next time we're outfitting a truck, I would very much like to consider some other options besides like uh, that I think their warranty is very broad and I think that this fits within their interpretation of their warranty uh, but that yeah that, I, I, that doesn't mean I'm happy about it or that I want to use them as a vendor again do we have do we have a history of using them yes so this is a company we've been doing business with regularly. They want our business in their <clears throat> reneging on $3,200. That's why it's as low as $3,200. So the $3,200 is the, the cost share price? Yes. And Allegiant, has anyone talked to Allegiance about this? We have, I have not. Um, yeah, the... 
specifically talking to allegiance about you know that they said that they did the proper maintenance if they also were unaware of this you know that the proper maintenance includes working the machine so that the grease works through the whole system not just basically it sits at the there's two points that you fill it and it just sits there unless you run the hoist up and down a number of times you said it would be difficult but not prohibitive by difficult do you mean you just have to run it or do you mean something else you have to lift the body up and down yeah but i want to just make sure that's what he yes like you said the statement it would be difficult but not prohibitive is that what you mean to for us to do the maintenance what is difficult you got to be box sander on the i've got yeah, uh, the difficult uh, part of doing the maintenance for us is that we have to take whatever equipment we have on it off and run the hoist. Both uh, the chloride tank that we use in the summer and the salt spreader that we use in the winter prevent the full extension of the hoist. Okay. So we will have to, a few times a year, take whatever we have on there off and cycle through the machine. Uh, when we're greasing it. I'd be very concerned about your question, Beth, is if we do this, is it going to happen again? I mean, I think that's basically what you were getting at is, are we just going to be back here a year from now, right? Having exercised the hoist, and I, I have a lot of heartburn over the fact that Apparently, it was our fault because we didn't do maintenance that we didn't know we were supposed to do because they didn't provide us any information about that. That's do we know that we didn't give that? Funky. I mean, the thing is, do we know that we didn't give that information because it wasn't Jason, I believe? We, I mean, we can't, we can't prove a negative. Right. We have no evidence of having received that. Hold on one second, Mark. You're so did they in all this discussion did they give you something that said this has to be done every three months or every 200 hours or no so basically they're saying it's our fault we didn't maintain it and they're not telling us how to maintain it because not in writing maybe it needs to be done every 100 hours yeah who knows yeah who knows I mean, so if it fails it's clearly our fault no matter what no matter what. even if we maintained it every week Evan? In the interest of moving things along, um, I think that it's a design flaw. I would be more than willing to see a breakdown of where Viking is sharing costs with the town, but I would like to see predominantly a change in pitch of the cylinder that would prevent this from happening again in the future or another option. They can move the whole cylinder to the front of the bed and put a bigger one on it. There's a lot of options. Or a couple of grease. I don't want to talk about this. There's two already. There's that, two already. Yeah. Um, but they're, I'm sorry, Evan, I just want to bring this up. Uh, that is one of the suggestions that Jason believes will help with maintenance of it in the future is knowing that, knowing where the grease, grease doesn't reach from the existing fittings, he wants to install a couple extra fittings uh, in it so that. To make sure that when he runs it, it's getting circulated throughout the whole system so that we don't encounter another dry spot in the future. Which would probably avoid warranty if we did it. If we did it. Um, okay, how do we want to proceed? Do you have more? Evan? I was just going to say that we could opt for the cheaper option and then get. This information. I mean, six hundred dollars to bolt it down. Our guys could probably do that ourselves, but that would at least make it stiff for plowing season until we had information. And are we doing more damage by doing that? Mark wants it done anyways. At least for plowing, so well, the whole body's plowing. not going like this every time it gets like the corner. I was going to agree with Evan that. You know, it seems to me the reason it failed, according to uh, Viking, is because we weren't using it. We weren't ever using the lift. Well, if we're not using the lift, why don't we 
eliminate it, you just bolt it down and the 600 bucks versus 3,200. And I think when Jason was here the last time, he said that that was something the guys could do. Bolt it down. Okay, do we have a motion? Could we? Sorry. No, I'm going to second your motion. I was going to say we could take this up Wednesday after you have a chance to touch base with Jason and Viking. I know it's a joint meeting, but select board can discuss. I already voiced my opinion. Do you would like okay. to make, uh, uh, Do you want to make anyone else want to make a question? We spend up to $600 to secure the bed for the and remove the hoist cylinder. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Would you be willing to include in that motion if the highway crew is not able to perform that on our, with their own services? Isn't that the six hundred dollars includes them doing it? That's for no, biking I think to that do would it. Be having biking do it. Yeah, but I but I put a six hundred dollar. I mean, if the if the town can do it, great. Up to six hundred dollars. That's my motion. We all know we're going to be talking about this again. We're just yeah. taking care of it for now. That's yep. true. And and the motion does not include the word Viking in it. I will know. I don't believe you said Viking. No, I didn't. <laughs> so, okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Oh, second? We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, have it. Okay. Uh, our other maintenance piece, uh, the oh. blower for the tractor. Uh, the gearbox on it has worn out and needs to be replaced. Uh, unfortunately, it's the entire gearbox. Um, they don't sell individual parts. So it is a little what more expensive than we'd like. What year is that? Blower? It's pretty new, <laughs> but the, the transmission, the gearbox on it uh, is specifically has a shorter warranty than the rest of the equipment. Of course it does. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> and it's over a year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it That's a year not funny. Too much? <laughs> Just. Motion to approve repair of lower gearbox. Yeah, we, we have a motion in a second. Any discussion? That's 2700. Correct. Yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's how it Whatever happened to the unit that uh, Beaver put together for the front of the grader? I mean, I couldn't tell you That's where going it, with what it. happened with it. Huh? That's going with it. I'll take it off. I think it, I think it was on the prior grader. Yeah. Over, I yeah, think it's, it's, it's going with the grader. This is a one for our tractor. This is a new purchase for the tractor. Yeah, I know. But not. The one on the grader is kind of nice because it didn't require the tractor on a separate transmission. Went off the hydraulic. He would designed it himself. Okay. Bruce White, you mean? By the other? Um, okay. Sheriff's okay. Department budget. You don't have the. What am I missing? Roger, you want to drag a chair? Okay. Right? Yeah. It's literally the last page. No, last pages. You want him to sit right there? Come um, on. Did we have it? No. I think so. I don't think that I can. It's such good news. We didn't need it. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm uh, hanging in there. Lots, lots of meetings this week. Well, sorry, do you have some copies of the proposed? Watch it. Uh, I will have to. It went down. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think they were saying 6%. Uh, yeah. Down. Okay. I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to pull up what I have just to speak to. Uh, the tank right here is more than 
Yeah, so. Is that the version with the zeroed out 60? So what I got is the 3% version that would leave 60 okay. hanging. Then I got an 8% version that takes care of everything. And then. Yeah, that's, we want those two. Definitely. And back, and then, I've got what it would cost each count. Yep, so sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Do you need the communications too, or? Uh, yeah, Brian needs copies of that one too. Uh, I think we, I think we should um, for the communications we can pick that one up next. We can pick that one. Yeah, up because next I'm time. having a meeting on that one. Yeah, we're so having a meeting on that one in December, first of December. Okay. Um. So long story short is with a, I'm gonna just speak to this off the top of my head because I can't find my file quick enough, um, is that there's, with a 3% increase, so carrying over the 3% that we've had for the past five years, if that 3% were, be to, were to be applied this upcoming budget, it would mean that operating costs would have a 62, 63, 60,000 something. 60,000, little over. $60,000 deficit in operating, um, which would be, in theory, could be backfilled with other contract work, but that's a little bit hairy right now. The other discussion is if we were to not ask the contracts that the Sheriff's Department has with other outside the our three towns, if we didn't have that supplemental income, applied to the budget, it would mean an 8% increase for our sheriff department budget. Can you say that again? It would mean an 8% increase if that $60,000 was not supplemented. Mm, no way 60 grand equals 5%. It does when you split it by town. But, um, I mean, five talking about five percent of the four hundred thousand and change. That seems really high. Are you talking just the your... sixty thousand and getting rid of Elmore and other contracted services? That would get us. Elmore is included in the overall um, the revenue for the bucket of work. So uh, Elmore's already factored in the numbers. I don't see how sixty thousand works to five percent. Raw numbers. 8%. So it would be an 8% increase to each town. But he's saying that you're eight... going from three to eight, which is five. That's the difference. Okay. $60,000. Yeah. If $60,000 was 5% of uh, your let budget. Me, let me, Evan, let me get the paper in front of all of us here so I can follow. Over. Do you know what your entire operating budget is? I will. Proposed. Okay, thanks. Okay, 2023. So the total operating budget for 2023 is 1.347. Yeah. Get that communications. Interesting. Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. One more. That's not right. Something's wrong. Communications. Communications. Wrong. communications. I thought they were in packets. Not. Okay. They should, they should have four pages in a package. I have. I have. I have two more. Three of the same one. <laughs> Oh, no, I, don't. I have two of the same. Do we have communication or, or patrol? I got patrol. Yeah, there's communication. Can you pass those back this way? I got two patrols. Oh, my two gosh. Patrols. I have one patrol, one communication. Does everybody have this one? Yes. There is the patrol, by the way, that says 8% in this box right here, Rosemary. 8% in this box yeah. or 3%. Yeah. Yeah. It's my so that's what you have to I don't know. Oh, did you say three? Three. Yeah, that's three. Here's a 3%. I've got three. You need eight. 
Yeah, you can have this one. You have an extra eight. That's my other sharing. Oh, thank you. Holy cow. Okay, don't ever do that again. Do not just throw <laughs> That's me. clearly can't handle it. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's start with a 3% page, okay? Patrol, 3%. And we're looking at the 23-24. is the budget year range that we're looking at. I was confused by that too, but yes, that's what we're looking at. So that's less than the 23-23. It is. 2.16% Two point, 2 less. Yep. So if you look at the bottom section, on the box at the bottom, it has a grant, it has a credit, it has a special, special investigation unit, it has another credit for Elmore, and then it has our three towns broken out. The very last line is that um, supplemental amount we were talking about to begin with. The 60,144? Yes. So essentially, if we have a 3% increase for Johnson, it ends up being $526,433 less. <clears throat> um, if we take away that 60, the revised amount is $551, sorry, $550. $51,988. So it's a $30,000, dollars difference. Why does that look like $40,000? $511, $551. $511, no, 550, $551 to $526. What is okay. meant by contribution from the one I'm going to share? If you don't pay it, we're going to have to change over here. So we've done that in the past. It's, you know, it's, yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying the the proposed budget for the shortfall of sixty thousand. If we if we keep it at three percent, and the the reason I did that is because just by way of illustration of what we had done, we had come up with a three-year agreement for 3%. And unfortunately, like you've always said, it's like, if you don't keep up with it year to year, it looks like a big jump when you finally have to pay the music. So anyway, so we started with a 3% just to see what that would look like. And on the on the other end to make it whole is the eight percent jump it's it's just what we can uh, uh what the three towns want to do and the the thing that is the three towns can say well we want three percent but there's going to be a point when we can't keep doing that anymore and it's it's not really good business do you have an idea if if all three towns said three percent do you have an idea what would have to come out of this budget to make up that sixty thousand dollars? What we've been doing in the past oh, is we haven't diminished the services or anything. We've done little things like you know, we got our own fuel tank, so we save thirty, forty cents a gallon there. Uh, you know, we're paying a mechanic twenty six bucks an hour as opposed to going to McMahon's at a hundred and whatever that is now. And we take money from our administrative budget. And uh, um, there was a time when we had a lot of people working, you know, helping the state doing motel security and all sorts of things. We take that money and supplement it. But right now, my problem is, is that I've got to, we've worked so hard to keep the people that we have that I can't. Uh, um, I can't cut corners there. Uh, it's it's just a fact that you need two people on a shift or most of the shifts now. 
to deal with what we have to deal with out there. Uh, because that's as big a factor as people leaving, going to Morristown or Stowe, uh, as the retirement is. So, you mean getting people who say there's got to be two people on the show? Well, versus right. Like you know, when we're dealing with some of the issues we're dealing with now. So, Roger, are you down a person or something? How, how, no place else in the world is health insurance going down the cost. And it looks like so health insurance is a little bit weird. I can speak to this. Health insurance, I asked a lot of questions about it. Health insurance is a little bit weird because they took the current year, last year, health insurance numbers and applied it toward the budget next year. So they're always in arrears on insurance costs. And <laughs> the other thing is you're looking at using uh, femurs. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully that'll work. Is that going to work? Uh, they have come and asked us. We've been working throughout the summer getting, providing them with information and everything. And they are talking about bringing uh, or expanding their portfolio to their board. Um, and we're the, the guinea pig there. So... We're hoping right now they have all of my, our material and hopefully we're going to be able to to be a part of Emers, which we've been trying to do for years. So, so that the other unknown factor right now is that with uh, Secretary or, or the Treasurer Pierce leaving um, and we'll see tomorrow who we're going to have for a new Treasurer in there. If we are able to get the 20 year retirement for the staff to be competitive with all of the other municipalities and the state police, the employers are going to, or the employees are going to pay, I think we said something like 11%, yeah. which is going to, which is, and we're going to pay less. So that's going to look less too here on the retirement end of it. But we but got that's hit not with budgeted it. that way right now. No. Right now it's budgeted as though nothing changes for retirement. Well, it's just interesting to me. Even salaries are down, you know, 22 to 23. Just that's why I asked if there was a. We, we, are, we, we are full staffed. We have a, a person hopefully going to graduate in a month from the academy. You know, we're full staffed with patrol and we're full staffed with communications, which if you look around at other municipalities, it's it's uh, that can't be said statewide. Everybody's in crisis. So, but what we got, Mark, where the salaries are down a little bit, we've got changes um, in um, we've got brand new personnel, and we may have had a change in. Um, um, well, health insurance would, wouldn't show up at that line there, but but I think it's probably because we've got some fairly new people at the bottom. So the way, you know, I don't know that tonight what you wanted to do. I know that we were going to discuss it, and then did you say you were going to discuss it with the other towns? Yeah, I'll follow up with the other towns based on whatever the Because Wolcott had their meeting monday night last last monday was it uh in hyde park is having i'm going to hyde park's meeting wednesday night. Wednesday. yeah of course we all have to be on the same page well we don't have to <clears throat> so we don't have to the reality is we don't have to if we wanted to apply that sixty thousand differently than somebody else wants to. We could do calculations to determine what percentage of that 60K belongs to us and apply that, you know, whatever percentage we would agree to for an increase to. Um, so are you saying like if, if you wanted to pay for it, but another town didn't? <clears throat> yeah. It's a partnership, so we'd have to to talk because I'm in uncharted waters when we start 
you know, uh, uh, the I'm formula just thinking that we don't have to. Like we all sign independent contracts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what it would be based on the sensor scale. Yeah. Splitting well, forward. yeah, yeah. For patrol, it's just census, and for communications, it's grand list and census. Yeah. So this this sheet here is the difference between three and eight. Yeah. Yeah. What you have to be careful of if we don't all agree is we had this problem two years ago where Wolcott only wanted to pay for half of their police budget or some they wanted to significantly reduce police budget. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way that and we could have probably managed it with Wolcott because their share of the uh, police the patrol budget is about 20%. If Pike Park or Johnson had come in with the same thing, it would have been in big trouble for the sheriff's department. But what we'd have to do is reduce services to those communities who want to reduce uh, their contribution. Right. And that's probably pretty much a headache. Oh, well, that's hard to do because so it is cost. Yeah. Um, so what do we need to do there? So, what are your thoughts on the three percent versus the eight percent? Um, Rosemary, I'm going to ask if you can do a quick calculation. Maybe Evan's already doing it. Do we know if we went with the eight percent, what it, their cost would be to taxpayers? A little more than a cent. A little bit more than. Okay. The, you, the difference between three and eight. Yeah, pennies like twenty-two. Just, just what the eight is. With a three percent, it would be that would be about two cents. It'd be, it'd be a couple cents probably from the five eleven. Mm -hmm. So what's a, what's a penny raising right here in that About twenty two thousand. So the the increase would be a penny and would be a penny and change. Penny and change of of the increase from three to eight. Three to eight. The, the five percent that you were yeah. talking about. Okay, what's the board's thoughts? Or do you have other questions? Where does the uh, 60,000 come from? If you don't have it, you aren't doing those contracts anymore. Well, we still have some coming in and it's just gonna cut into to that one, so. Here's my thoughts. My thoughts are that the health health insurance isn't. I I have a hard time with health insurance numbers. Same as you, Mark. I have a lot of questions about it. I think putting your health insurance projections using arrears is going to create a problem. Um, that being said, I think that. Going with this budget, going with a higher percentage increase, and I don't know that eight percent is the right. I don't know that that's the right number. I'm just saying a higher number. Uh, I would actually be a little bit supportive of, and I, I want to just make sure that feel everybody out. I don't like pushing the costs out, but I think they're going to get bumped up anyway, and I would be more comfortable bumping them up a little bit more this year. Because I think next year it is going to be a little bit of a shocker. Is there any? Just, I'm sorry. No, I'm done. Are you done? I wasn't trying to speak over you. Is there any thought in possibly trying to do another three year contract, shooting more at the 5%? That way, towns can each budget and the sheriff's department would be biting off. You would be biting off less than the sixty thousand this year, but at least in a three-year period, that would give the towns the ability to budget for three years plus catch the Get sheriff's department yeah. up with the patrol budgets. Right. If I had, because that's three, if I had your help, we care because we're losing Norm, our accountant, he's retiring. Um, I think I'd love to have. I'd love not to have to do this every year. <laughs> that the whole thing is guessing 
you know where we're going to be but if i had some help from the towns to you know try to help me through some things that i'm not thinking about and everything and in coming up with with um um you know the proposal three years from now uh where we took our best guess and that we're going to be able to survive and it's going to be fair to the towns i'd be i'd welcome that so it sounds like so kinda... it sounds like five percent is on the table based on that you'd be open to having that conversation and you just need to work it out a little further yeah so not not holding you to anything but I mean, are you saying like maybe five percent this year and something more than three percent next year and in the year like after five percent year over year for three years mm. right so johnson's contribution uh last year was five hundred and eleven thousand. this year it would be 536 instead of the 526 mm -hmm. that you have and then the following year another five percent would get you 567 ish um yeah historically five percent is very generous of a jump we are in a little bit of a yeah so what's anybody here have any thoughts as to is the cost of living kind of peaked or do we think mm -hmm. it's going to go we down have, or do we, we, no idea. we have any idea <laughs> yeah we don't know i have a rock i threw in the ocean i don't know what it hit <laughs> <laughs> water <laughs> Um, yeah. I think it is going to, but not quite. That's my personal opinion. But the thing is that, okay, in talking, I think to your point about like working through what it could look like for the next few years, I definitely want to do that. And I was chatting, I'll just speak probably a little bit out of line. I was chatting with Linda a little bit too from Wolka. Um, She cares about consistency to her tax base year over year. Um, so I'm certain she would have um, room for discussion there. Uh, and I believe just in having the conversations with all three of us, that Hyde Park would be willing to have those conversations too. So we definitely should have them. I'm curious, did, did Hyde Park, since they've, Hyde Park, no, did Wilka give an idea of where they were, their head was at with the budget? I, I haven't heard from Linda since the meeting. Okay. So. Okay. But if you wanted to have that conversation i'm open to you know seeing what we could come up with for three years yeah okay you know and just you know i'll have to kind of just do my job and manage to my budget whatever we agree with or yeah or else you guys don't want to hear about it if i go over my budget but but, true. that's true <laughs> uh okay are there other questions for roger i, th I think you know we did three years at three percent and during those three years we had an inflation you know two percent increase uh, two and a half percent you were well within that um i guess what would make me a little nervous now is um, we got a CPI of, of about six, seven percent, somewhere yeah. in that range. It's like um, you know, eight, eight percent. Depends on which one you look at. You know, right, and where it, and, and you know, what month it is. Right, right. It's one thing for but, your well, for savings. Like so the, the trend is going that way, and you know when is it going to end? How's it going to end? If we go into a uh, recession, then may be very competitive with your salary if if inflation continues you may be you know behind the eight ball again trying to keep those salaries yeah. maybe you're not well so you're supporting more well i'm just saying three years in this time i think is a little bit of a bigger unknown than it was three years ago when the inflation was just steady how about a concept of trying to tie something to the cpi or, or some reasonable I, rate of inflation i would only be supportive of that is it if it were tied to the previous year's cpi average over the last 12 months right. that way in december of 21 right. or 22 i guess we could look at the cpi of december of Prior to 20. Yeah, I agree. And I think we need to properly budget. 
I think we need to look at trends over a longer period of time also. So um, where are we landing? I think if it is tight that the CPI in some fashion we'd be able to budget because we know what this is about. I understand, but the CPI is going to fluctuate over time. And I would prefer personally to have something that is more trend-based than CPI-based so that we don't have those ebbs and flows on cost. So when you're meeting with Wolka mm -hmm. and Hyde Park, are you meeting as the Sheriff's Department Advisory Committee or just as a budgetary no, no, no. committee? Just, just, yeah, no. Just our, our town reps for budget stuff. It moment. sounds like the other two towns got to weigh in. I think 5% is very generous and would catch up in three years. Would you be supportive of that, Duncan? Uh, yeah, in theory, um, you know, if we if we go 8%, I'm going to personally have some heartburn with going to the voters with an 8% increase in budget. Uh, you know, and you've heard me say it before, Roger. Um, you know, it's it's what twenty eight percent of our total budget. Um, it's a lot. You know that it's it's a lot to ask our taxpayers. I mean, I know, I know it's a valuable service and all of that, but it's, when the rubber hits the road, it's it's a significant portion of my budget. Yep. Okay. So so it sounds like generally you would you would entertain the idea of five percent, Eric. What do you think? And Mark? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with 5%. Okay, so. Even 8% I could work with. Yeah. But I would like to. I don't, uh, this is yeah. for full full budget for the town. So yeah. I don't know how this is playing into the town. I don't know how much the town grand list is growing. <clears throat> not by 8%. So. No, it's not growing by 8%, but it's growing by more than $50,000 worth of income for the town. So. That's the thing, is it? You know, I'm just thinking of numbers. Go ahead. So, where we can go from here, I think you have consensus from our board. Yeah. I would more than support a three year 5% if the other two towns would to catch everybody up. And if you want to have a rider in there for if inflation is above 10% for a two year period, we can come back to the table. Sure. But it's very easy to include that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that everybody's protected. What do you, I mean, what do you think about just as another tool as a two-year contract? Just because of the unknown aspect. Of it. Let me just put it this way. I'd be open to that discussion as well if, if it was just too much of a you know crystal ball shot at what it's gonna look like in three years. So Okay, so I'll take it away to work with the other boards. We'll reconvene with you at some point, and then we'll go from there. So Wednesday, I meet with Hyde Park. Is that right to tell them what this what we discussed? Yeah, I think I'll send an email tonight to to Brian and Linda both, just so they have a general idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Oh, just, uh, sorry, just do we want to talk communications? Yep. Um, so to communications, this is, um, what, go ahead. For a 7% increase. So can you speak to the communications piece? That's this is the total budget, right? Right. 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 Total assessment. Yeah, I don't have it broken down into, um, into um, you know what each town's going to pay. Um, we have the sheriff's advisory board that is they deal pretty strictly with the communications budget, and each town has a uh, a member on that, and that's when they vote on it. Um, so and really. Um, you know, if you just go down Who's through. Who's our member? Oh, it's you? Oh, you've been going? Okay. Like we haven't met before. Yeah, because of COVID. But yeah, we had a jump in in our our, um, in our salary 
portion, I think, and that makes up you know quite a bit of the of the uh, the jump. Um, well, it's also insurance. Like your insurance bumped up a lot. You have workers' comp that was raised significantly. Yeah. Hospitalization insurance. But it's really important to know what the formula is for each town because population grand less figures could change. And yeah, and the problem that we have with that is just that we don't get the grand lists until January. You know, and then the budgets are already out by then. So but usually it goes down slightly after we get the grand list for Jones. Mm -hmm. um, the Romero County still pays just over half of these budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, we have supplemental income coming in from Hardwick, Greensboro, Berry. Berry. And there's something that I'm working on right now with the um, the 911 board, in which the state police is having a very, very difficult time with their Westminster barracks. They can't staff enough people to take 911. Calls. So I proposed dedicating one of our call takers to um, to do nothing but strictly sit in a chair taking nine one one calls, including ours. Um, and and I propose that they pay that full salary. So, but we'll we'll see how that goes. But, so the other thing that that's going on is the state police or the Department of Public Safety saying that they're going to, uh, they want to get out of dispatching for local fire EMS and police. They just want to dispatch for state agencies. So they've been working on setting up regional dispatches. So what that means for us is, is there's going to be fire departments and EMS and everything looking for dispatch services question is how much more can we take on without having to add overhead and so but that's you know they're supposed to have something in a report by first of december i think for the legislature on that so but that's not going to impact this year's this upcoming budget will it it would impact this coming budget but that's okay. only if something something were to happen won't it well, it could even impact the budget we're in now if, if the town wanted to, uh, uh, you know, if we wanted to take on another fire department or what have you. So, but it would reduce it in significant. You know, these us, I would imagine it wouldn't be a lot. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. If we could get the breakout for like what the expected costs are for Johnson, just based on yeah. what you know right now, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Meaning what current brand list uh -huh. values are and. That's care. I'll get on that tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. The situation where we want Stowe's grand list to grow. <laughs> um, and Stowe, situation. Stowe and Morrisville, Morrisville together. Yeah. And, I, and I had a conversation with each of their town managers on this, on the 7%. So, so. Okay. I'm going to, um, is there anything else that we need to cover? It sounds like not. Um, We'll likely pick this up again in November in the second meeting because we'll have more budget discussions then. So, okay, thanks for coming in. Okay, next up is uh, one, two, three proposed municipal partnership for assessor services. Is that already? Yeah, we're skipping down and then we're going to pop back up. Confused me. Thank you, Dr. Do you want me to tee it up just a little bit? Or? Yeah, please. Yes. yes. Okay. So um, in your packet, you should have a copy of an agreement for services. Page 21. Uh, yes. It looks like there's no other one. Uh, page 20. Um, so essentially, this is very similar to what we talked about um, uh, conceptually uh, at the board meeting where you said go ahead and go to the next step. So this is basically the next step. Um, 
and I had included a spreadsheet. Um, I think that that mailed out or sent out to everybody, um, which gave some estimates of what we thought you know our cost might be. I think it was in the vicinity of point five k. Thank you. Right. Um, it didn't. Get, it doesn't look like it got included in the packet, which was fine because that was my spreadsheet. Uh, I had asked Pacha, uh <clears throat> to give us um, some indications, and I think that email of hers also went out to the board. That's on page twenty. And that, that's on page twenty. That is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought Pacha was replacing that one, but is there? Yeah, there. Yeah. So essentially, what we're what we're asking tonight is um, Hyde, Hyde Park has approved. Um, Olka is uh, going to be voting at their next board meeting and it sounds like the last board meeting last week probably. Okay, so so and I haven't heard whether they approved it or not, but um, all the indications from Linda was that they were gonna you know they were gonna agree. So really uh, what I'm Hoping to get tonight is concurrent for the board to authorize that um, to sign the agreement. Any discussion? Thank you for your work. Honey. Yeah, the other thing that we need to do, we don't have to do it tonight, um, but we do need to assign if if all three communities agree and the LCPC board um, approves it at their November board meeting. Um, each community will have to assign one person to represent um, their community, their community in this in this part. Yeah, I don't have to do that tonight. But when is the LCPC meeting? Uh, it's their November meeting. I think it's the third Tuesday. Third Tuesday, so just before Thanksgiving. Okay. Okay. Do we, uh, Rosemary? Do you have it? Yeah, probably. But let me just ask Rosemary. Do you have any questions or concerns on this? Yeah, sure. I think it looks like it might be slightly cheaper than what we're paying now. Excellent. So I make a motion to authorize the chair to sign the agreement between LCPC and the member towns of Pike Park Johnson and Lincoln. Representative Johnson. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Habits. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Oh, Do they have somebody heat up? And also thank Tasha for us, please. I, I will. Um, she's put a lot of work into it. Um, the answer to your question is that seems to be a changing landscape. <laughs> okay. Did you say that they need to have? I guess it's the third Tuesday, so we will have a meeting before third that, Monday. regardless. Yeah, they they need to know that we have basically that we plan. I can I can let Tasha know tomorrow that the board is doing it tonight and authorize that to sign. I think that's basically the thing. Perfect. Okay. Um. So yeah, just let me know when it's here, and I'll happily sign. Um, next up is the continued ARFA discussion. So we are on page packet, packet page seven through 10. It's like. So I spoke our conversation at the last meeting and tried to group them under five. Uh, Took out the the ones that we thought were not either not good fits or were more village related or or what have you, uh, and trying to then fit them to broad categories so that we could focus discussion a little bit more. Um, and in doing that, we have uh, on page seven our kind of leaders in, in this, the recreation trails, bikes and pedestrians received different projects under that heading received a total of nine votes. Uh, 
general economic development received six and industrial park in particular received five. Just for flow, yeah. it looks like packet page eight is additional supporting evidence of those three columns. Package page nine is new column headers and package page 10, page 10 is also new column headers just for reference. Didn't quite print well. Yeah, the, with the first three receiving significantly more votes, it was a little bit funny, but um, <laughs> yeah, so those are our, our leading candidates for places we might spend some of that, spend some of the ARPA funds. Is there any specific, um, are there any items that we should remove from this list? Let's do that first, actually. And to be clear, these are all based on the survey results. Mm -hmm. They are. This is just processing the survey results and our conversation, kind of our first pass on those survey results. Let's be really super clear. This is taking that June meeting where we had that open meeting forum and the results of that open meeting forum, combining those results with survey results and other feedback we've received since. So those multiple channels coming together. And then um, I want to say two meetings ago-ish, uh, we ran through all of the items in the art in the combined lists. And basically the board did a quick yay nay on each of those items. And these are the items that passed that filtering process uh, with the planning commission. It was here too, by the way, if you recall. Um, and this is the result of that filtering. I, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, you, the specific question was what can be removed. Yep. I think. To assist with renovating existing rental houses using ARPA funds is probably a bad idea. Okay, let's talk about it. Any objections to or differing hard. opinions? Uh, page 10. I'm starting from the bottom. Way to make it simple. Yeah. So let's vote. So there's one vote on that the housing. Is there anyone who feels strongly that they should stay on the list? And if so, why? You can't vote on that one. You could vote to not assist with it. That's where I would leave. <laughs> but just to say. I mean, we got to get realistic at some point. Now's gonna, the time. We're going to have about 600000 right? That's not going to be enough money to replace one bridge town yeah or so or we, the we have to whittle down a list and think about something that would have a long-term impact for the taxpayers and if we also consider the likelihood of being able to use the ARPA funds to leverage other funds would be ideal yeah it, very short roadmap for that but definitely well, would this be. i'm this one doesn't not um, not would all right are we going just for reference the four lowest votes because these four all have one vote just to be fair this isn't necessarily bottom of the four there's housing there's transportation so medical transportation upgrades secure uh, network of services um, etc that's also only a one vote item um law enforcement we're using to offset annual increases um, and capital investment. So update and maintain our buildings built for village. Uh, I don't know why village garage is scratch. scratch, that. scratch that. I would not agree with that. Okay, um, what's your what would you want be wanting to save? To update and maintain our buildings should definitely be considered. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold that thought. So everyone is agreeing that housing, transportation, and law enforcement can go away. Consent. Uh, it's on page 10. Right next to the housing. Uh, well, the one that you're looking at, Evan, is the middle one, the update 
update our buildings. Yeah, forget purposes. that one for one second, though. Let's not talk about that one for one second. Just the other three, the law enforcement and the transportation and the housing. Would you be wanting to save any of those onto our top list of ARPA fund usage? Given the conversation we just had about law enforcement services, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that uh, you're not feeling that one. Yeah. Yes. Well, you do you want to spend ARPA money on law enforcement? Uh -huh. Is the specific question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I think the jury, for me at least, I think the jury's out on that. Okay, so you're okay with leaving that. The last two, medical transport and housing. Can we strike those? Get rid of those. Okay. okay. Everybody's okay. already agreed. Page 10 could be taken off the list. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Yeah. So law enforcement, let's talk about that for a second. What are your thoughts, Duncan? Uh, all things considered, I wouldn't want to use our funds unless it were, you know, a, a last resort. Um, we were we we're talking earlier about surplus. Um, you know, I would certainly be open to the idea of using, you know, dedicating some of the potential surplus in a budget um, towards an offset of that. Um, ideally, I'd like to see. <laughs> Some stabilization in that, and that gosh, it's a big number. Yeah, it's a big number. But but, but the question is, are we money for it? Again, I would say, you know, to me that would be an absolute last resort um, for the use of ARPA funds for all of the reasons that we've talked about before. Would you ever use? Let's. I'm going to rephrase that a little bit. Would you ever use ARPA funds for law enforcement over rec? stuff economic development stuff industrial park stuff beautification ever is a big word i know well go ahead i guess what you think when i the way i look at it is this 600 ish thousand dollar our performance that kind of money has never come before and I don't think it should be put on something that, you know, updating, maintaining our buildings or using for law enforcement or anything else that would come out of our operating budget. You know, to use that one time money like that for a one time gain, I don't think that's the best benefit to the community. The best benefit, I think, to the community is to use that money that will. Uh, Bring troop uh, for you know some length of time. You know whether it's uh, uh, I don't know. I'll go to the industrial park. You know if it if that kind of money increases our grand list, well, that's a benefit that the town will realize forever. So that because this kind of money has just never come before. I think we want to use it very wisely to try to benefit long term, not just the short term. I agree. I do also. <clears throat> I mean, I would argue that we have had some pretty big hunks of money come in in the past. So. Not like this with no strings. But well, regardless. Right. But, well, there is yeah. strings. But regardless, it doesn't matter. It's not Either way, there. transformative is where I'm headed to. I want to do something that. All, you know, this long, long lasting. I mean, when you think of the history of Johnson, our forefathers, they were bowling alleys, brought their co op in, brought the college in. That's what we want to do. And if we're just generally speaking, I wouldn't want to see the ARPA funds used for something that there are other funding sources out there. Mm -hmm. Go for them for those items and reserve the average for something that's a big splash. I'm going to take you off the hook, I think, on a law enforcement question, Duncan, because I'm just going to ask if there's consensus to remove law enforcement from this category. Yeah. yeah. Four. Okay, we have consensus, so you don't need to even think about it. <laughs> no, I, I can I can go along with it. Okay. Um, I'll let you <laughs> I don't love the capital investment 
title so much on this one, uh, to be completely honest, but. We can all agree to strike the village garage from that. We agree to that. <laughs> they got their own room. Let's be room. So updating and maintaining buildings. The reason I think that should stay, and I understand that that would be a one-time expense that could be involved in our capital budget, but all the buildings that the town has, whether we're half owners or full owners, have just fallen far enough in disrepair. I don't see the town catching up with all of the costs going up. So if we were to upgrade mechanical systems, insulation, uh, you know, various different buildings, right? Because we have the whole house, the library we have here. They would be long-term gains because you're protecting an asset of the taxpayers. Uh, this room specific, I mean, it would be nice to know if we put a sprinkler system in and an operable wall here, and then potentially we wouldn't need to rely on the school, which we don't technically own anymore for town meeting. Um, that's just the idea. I'm not saying that's exact money, but some one-time money spent on insulation in the library would be a forever safe for the taxpayers. My question is, is there, and maybe you, Tasha certainly indicated that there was going to be some potential ARPA funding or energy efficiency improvements and those kinds of things. Would would going after some of those funds accomplish what you are what you're thinking? Or I everybody always wants to line up for government bacon, but I would be fully supportive of going after them. But up until this date, they've only been discussed as potential funding sources. Do they exist or are we just saying potentially they're going to exist next year? We only have four years to spend a small amount of money on something that will last for taxpayers. I think that to that point, that if we did do things to upgrade buildings, like I don't see it as necessarily maintenance stuff. I see it more upgrading. Like, is this a, an opportunity to upgrade an HVAC system that's really a mess that's going to co cost us a fortune? I don't know that that's true. I don't know that it isn't true. We do know we have a furnace that needs to be something needs to happen with in the garage. Um, but there are other methods of upgrading, right? Like maybe we do want to set ourselves up so that when we have access to fiber, we actually have a network in place. Maybe it's worth. That's infrastructure, but yeah. I mean, it's about investing in what we have. So I personally like the idea of keeping something like that here too. Um, just noting though that I like even more using money to make money. <laughs> so I don't know that I would settle on that one, but I don't know that. Well, if it saves you money over the long term, it's as good as making money. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to put it into perspective, a Holcomb house, keeps being discussed. I think we could drop a third of this money in there and in a heartbeat. But I'm just trying to put the amount of money yeah. into perspective. We have a lot of things on this list. Not that we will, but yeah. We couldn't accomplish some of these single items. But I think we need to, leveraging for grants is a great idea. Increasing grant lists is a great idea. Nobody's gonna deny that, but we need to, come into perspective somewhere. And to say leveraging grants is the only thing we want to do, I think we would send some of the money back to the government because it would be spent by the deadline. Okay. We'd be pretty um, egregious to not spend the money by the deadline. We will spend the money by the deadline. Come have our money. Eric and then Brian. Slight board so salaries. This whole discussion <laughs> would benefit if we have had a economic development person on board right now because they would know a lot of these answers on what kind of money, where there's going to be money out there, and how we could get the most bang for our buck. So maybe we need to step back and get that economic development coordinator or somebody on board 
to help us with these discussions. Yeah, we do need to. Hold on, I'm here after Brian. Um, I wanted to point out uh, a couple of things. One of the big ones, a, a number of people have mentioned about wanting to spend all this money without having to give any of it back. So having having projects of different sizes kind of in the pipeline will help us with that. So that if we end up with, you know, we're gonna spend most of it on something like the light industrial park or whatever, and we have a few thousand dollars near the end, it'll be kind of nice to have done a little bit of planning on some upgrades and some smaller projects to make sure that we don't give any of it back, that we can use the whole thing on, on different projects. So I, I think that including this, this is, uh, yeah, something that made the cut initially. And I think it's a pretty good idea because there's a lot of things that we can do that are relatively low cost uh, that would either be energy efficiency improvements that would save money or quality of life improvements like the wireless networking or one thing or another that might be a good way to use a little bit of money that doesn't fit on higher priority projects near the end of a, the life cycle of the money. Interesting point. Yep. Okay. Evan? To Eric's point, it almost lit a light bulb off before you even said it. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, we have money in our budget for economic development. Um, if the board thought it would be a good idea to use some of that money to hire an ARPA expert, so that we can know the whole train. No, maybe not. Did you lose your thought? Because I'm going to go to someone else. If you I go to somebody else. Scott? Yeah, thanks for putting your hat on this. So, great list, awesome things. I wish you could do them all. But it hurts the rest for me um, being able to travel around quite a bit in Vermont. I've met tons of people who used to live in Johnson or are ready to leave Johnson. And the two issues that keep coming up in the conversation are high taxes. So this should be a backbone of what we're talking about. And affordable housing, single family housing. And we don't have any of that to offer. They're heading north to our northern towns and then carpooling even further. They were sort of frustrated that the housing market will be better in Johnson. We're sitting on the industrial park, great land. Um, I really don't agree with setting up a white industrial park. Um, MSI is building a brand new building down on Route 100 um, for a place. There's open um, buildings in Hardwick and Milton. I'm not sure what the occupancy rate is right now in Morrisville for industrial space. What we need is single family homes, and we have one um, It would put things back on the tax roll, which would be extremely helpful. It would get people into town. And I realize having a pretty town that's inclusive and has all the bells and whistles and bridges and potential pools and all this other stuff, it's all great, but there's no place to live. So I think, you know, for the board, and for a lot of residents who are struggling to figure out how to buy housing in Johnson, having that as a possibility, you'll see people start to show up. Um, you know, developing the town, I think, in a really good way. So I, I wish the board would let off the steam a little bit for light industrial, think about some of the family homes that are affordable, not big mansions, like little, you know, 1,200 square foot homes that people can actually afford. Bump the tax base up a little bit because now people are paying taxes on an affordable house, and that's long term. You know, I, I, East Johnson happened way before I showed up in town, but somebody had a vision where you know, people need to live somewhere and it worked. Um, the village is pretty dense, and I really don't see a lot more going on within village limits for single family homes, um, but. Again, you know, the town's sitting on a chunk of land that has been remained vacant for years 
And uh, Tracy might be working on your 10 year note. I'm not quite sure on that. Seems like about 10. Pretty close because we're almost done paying it off. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, when you look through your list, they're all yeah. wonderful, but think long term and what residents and citizens in northern Vermont really need at this point. And every time you turn on the television and listen to the governor, it's single family homes. There's no place that people can buy an affordable house. And, you know, you're heading up the north, you're heading up north, Greensboro, and North High Park, and Lowell. Okay, thanks, Scott. That's good, good feedback. Okay, uh, any other thoughts? I think we made some progress. In the interest of keeping the meeting moving, we probably do need how much time have we put on? Well, we jumbled I everything out, but it's kind of a walking bridge over the river. It should be a I thought we already did. Um yeah, I thought we did too. The walk I think bridge. it just got into the list because it was part it fell into that category. So fine. Yep. Do we all agree on that? Move mm -hmm. on. Okay. Yeah. Can you remove that from the list, Brian? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so for next steps, let's just talk about this really quickly and then we'll move on. Um, so for next steps, we need to put this on our next agenda too. We have a lot going on in our next agenda also. So just be prepared. That's what the rest of the year looks like. Um, but let's keep ARPA on our next agenda. And um I like the idea of challenging ourselves to what Johnson needs most. Um, so maybe we can take that away and come back. So what does Johnson need most? We can determine whether or not it relates to these categories. If it doesn't, we can have a heated argument about what Johnson needs most. But let's give ourselves some homework to really answer that question. Um. We'll want, to, we'll want to reuse this list with the things we've, we've scratched, removed. Um, discussion about having an expert uh, was raised a couple of times. We can invite, uh, BLCT has hired somebody to be an ARPA expert. We can invite them to appear at a future meeting. I don't know if we're quite there yet, but that would be a good one to keep in our minds. I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I've, I've spoken with her a number of times and she's very sharp and very practical, very pragmatic. Um, I, I think it would help inform our discussion in the winnowing process. You know, to Eric's point, I, I couldn't agree more. I also wonder if, if it might be prudent to even use some of the ARPA funds um, to help with the hiring process and, and get somebody on board that could actually help us <laughs> make some so, headway. I'm not sure if we can use our funds to get somebody on board when the heading point is in our budget and we haven't spent it yet. Well, it, it's true. That's not a huge amount of money um, that we've got in our budget. And, and I we can revise the proposal if we'd like, but if you recall, the reason we haven't spent the money was that we didn't have any proposals that we thought were worth spending the money on. It doesn't mean we should stop the process. No, it doesn't at all. I'm, I'm saying we can we can revise this. We can go back out. We can try a different tack on it. Um, but I wanted to make sure that that was out there that we tried. And what are, what are, did you get your next steps? You must be talking yeah. about towns. What are, what, are, what are other towns thinking about using their ARP money? For? I mean, it pretty yeah. well runs a gamut of uh, different people, different towns have different ideas. The 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 guiding principle that we're all being told is that the best use of this money is on transformative projects. I agree. That, but what are you getting the ideas? about what other town, different, transformative projects are meaning different things to different towns. There isn't, I don't think I've met a, or seen a trend that really mm -hmm. 
applies to us and, and what the different projects are. But I'm I don't have intimate knowledge with what we're running. See what other people think is transformative. Um, what is the purpose of the VLCT person? Is her purpose just to be supportive, or is her purpose to help generate ideas, or is her purpose to be a resource for municipalities? What is her purpose? Her purpose is to be a resource for municipalities. Okay. Um, and do we pay for her if we use her? No. I don't believe so. There might be some paid services that we could ask her for, but I don't. I'm not asking to spend money. I'm asking for free resources. <laughs> yeah. And so I just Th there are free re resources available. I can inquire for more details about what that entails. Okay. Okay. Maybe we should have her come. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not intimately familiar with what what they'll do for free and what the limits are. So if you could add that as an action to find out what the purpose of her role is, not don't ask if they're, don't ask about like what they charge for and what they don't. I don't want to ask that question. I want to know what the purpose of her role is and how towns can use her in that role. Um, so our board homework is what does Johnson need most and related mm -hmm. to ARPA funds and we will circle back and we'll have this. Is there anything we should eliminate right off the bat discussion again? If you wanna think about that and then we can have a, like I do wanna actually get into it and actually have, if we do disagree, like actually have those hard conversations in the next meeting. Good. I did like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Let's move on to the next. Um, right. So up next, thanks, Rosemary. Up next is the beautification committee mission statement. So this is on page 11. Um, the Johnson Beautification Committee has adopted this, correct? Or they sent it to us for approval before adopting it, I don't recall. We approved as a board that we want to approve the Send it to get approved by the board. So okay. We have approved it as board contingent on approval. Excellent. Uh, any questions, concerns, thoughts, or does the board want to accept it? What are the thoughts? Well, I guess because of previously this year, I kind of want to know what is meant by inclusive philanthropic opportunities. So inclusive philanthropic opportunities. Sorry. Okay. That means our micro mini grants or our mini grants that we were giving out um, in the spring. So we'd like to continue that, but we don't want to limit ourselves just to that. So we didn't say specifically mini grant. Um, and the yeah. inclusive part is that they were available to you know. Um, we made it a really simple process for people to apply for. We had um, great success with it, and they were meant to provide seed money for private and public citizens to and organizations to um, beautify their properties for all of us to enjoy. But they weren't necessarily inclusive to everybody that lives in the town. And what his, your point is that it was focused on village rather than town. Village and village only. It was town taxpayers' money. But if you lived in the town, you were not included. Yes, so that was, this was our first go at doing it. We had to put parameters on it. There was no way we could have opened it up to the entire town that would have been possible logistically. And the, the part that was very important to us is that, that these were properties that are easily seen from the road and the sidewalks. And, um, and that it was, you know, seen, uh in a really easy way um to people going through our village and stuff. So can you give an example of mm -hmm. so the projects that we um approved were on Railroad Street we had a private 
Residents uh, get provided some money for paint to, to paint the front of their house which we're starting to chip away. And that really improves that corner, Burwood Street, if you can look. Uh, we provided money for a business to put a permanent roof over their um, their uh, garage. The, the tarp, they had a plastic tarp that was worth sloppy millions, so that helped make that look better for everyone that drives and walks and rides through. Um, we gave money to the new cafe to do flowers in front. Um, we, who else? Uh, flowers for the um, the community oven, so really beautiful. These were all things that people could see, so they weren't you know, back away from the road that um, are just solely improvements for people's private property, but it was, we want it to be really public in, in the sense that everybody could see it. I I'm wondering, is that part of your mission? Like, is part of the mission the proximity <laughs> to, uh, this, yeah, to the visibility? Because because if it is like, um, I think I'm with Evan on this one. Like the the term, I understand your intent with the term inclusive, um, but I think it can be interpreted different ways, and because it is a town committee. I would be careful about using the word inclusive to be misinterpreted from what your intent is. And if the intent of the beautification committee is around those highly visible areas, I feel like that should probably be part of your mission. Um, How about if it simply read and philanthropic opportunity and didn't have the word inclusive? Or how about you just pull out the flowers are, it seems to me to promote public pride could leave inclusive build, philanthropic opportunity, but do you have to be that specific flowers from art? Especially for a mission statement. Yeah, I, I, personally, I could end it in public pride. Uh, I guess but maybe yeah. to Edmund's best point. You know, I, I think maybe uh, of course last year was the first year but going forward. Think about outside of the village limits because there's a lot of traffic on rail on the rail trail, which is mostly outside the village. Um, and a lot of traffic is 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 properties that are visible from that rail trail um, out beyond Dog's Head somewhere, maybe a, a residence that could be uh, spruced up or something. Was the mural actually in the village? Mm -hmm. Yes. That is in the village. But the, most of the rail trail is outside. The yeah, I know that. Yeah. So you know, there are places that are very visible but are outside the village too. So I think that C. it seems like the feedback right now for the for the committee trial, I think. Well, let me ask the board actually. <laughs> we ask the board. Uh, Mark's statement about ending after pride. I think that the statement leading up to the word pride, including the word pride, um, actually is very mission oriented. Um, and the things behind the word pride are action items as opposed to missions. Yeah, uh, what's that? Or, or, or examples of what, what yeah. that looks like. Yeah, you don't usually need an example in a mission statement, though. Right. So I think the feedback, it sounds like I'm getting, do you agree with that, too? Generals. Yeah, I guess. I think that's the feedback, I guess, Kyle, for the for the committee, if you don't mind taking that back, that if we take away the action items and end with the mission, which is about uh, promoting, you know, the quality and... Uh, I, I think we'd be comfortable with putting a period right there if that's what you wanted to put out. Yeah, okay. 
So it would be the mission of the Johnson Youth Engagement Committee to work collaboratively on the testing, better quality of counseling and promote public practice. Nice. Simple and sweet. I like it. Okay, it sounds like we have consensus. I don't think that we need to motion. Do we? Um, we're if they're more, looking for our, we have it okay. we have it with other committees sorry that's just my sorry that's me not anyone else i move as amended to adopt the yeah, mission statement for communication second okay we have a motion and a second all those in favor aye that's a great idea aye all those opposed aye. Okay, you have your mission statement. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for all the work around town. <laughs> really looking good. Okay, next up, Beautification Committee Railroad Street Bridge Request. All right, so moving on, we've got the uh, a, a specific project from the Beautification Committee, uh, and that is some decoration on the Railroad Street Bridge. Um, if you recall, this was suggested last year, uh, but I think it was suggested a little bit later in the year where we were concerned about having time and availability to get out and hang lights. And we had other other concerns, so we weren't able to do it. So it's a similar project to last year that's being brought again. This also includes uh, the colored plastic flags. They're... Hard plastic or vinyl or? Yeah, so all the specs are in the packet. Um, they're made of high quality plastic, they're waterproof. Something claims that they won't fade or wrinkle even in severe weather. No. Yep. We shall see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the second part. Yeah. And then in addition to the flags running uh, perpendicular across the road, there would be lights running on the cross braces. Now, last year, didn't we approve running lights on the railing? On the handrail? I think we might have. We, we did. I know we did. Yeah. I, I don't think did. it ended up being done. It didn't work out for some reason. Yeah. Because we originally had talked about having them hung higher, but there was some concern about safety and timing, I think a combination of the two. Um, and then we did settle on stringing them lower, but there was an issue with stringing them lower. I don't remember what the issue was. I don't know if the issue was. Like it wasn't a board issue though, it was like a like a functional issue. Well, I know that there's no electricity there, so that was a big issue of how we were going to actually light them. Now the solar technology has gotten better for these lights, and the lights that we spec'd up here in the um, proposal, there's an option to actually clip them onto things, the solar panel itself onto something, so they could actually be clipped up on top of the bridge and get full sun exposure. Um, rather than having to have it like planted in the ground somewhere. Okay. And the specific ask is the village going to yeah. install the flag yeah. and the light? Yeah. I think it's the logistics that I was hoping we could help to work out. Um, so we, we do have $500 earmarked to the beautification committee and the village annual budget. We haven't tapped into that yet. Our thoughts were that maybe we could throw that money back to the electric department and have them do all the hanging of the lights and the banners because uh, they have that cherry picker machine um, that can lift them up. And they have a lot of experience hanging banners and things around the village. I just felt like that's something that they would be really good at. And so maybe that $500 could go towards, towards their labor costs, basically, and the use of the cherry picker. Um, I did include the new village manager on that big email that I sent to everybody. He wrote back and said that he spoke to Nate, and Nate said that using the cherry picker would be very cumbersome for this job. Not really sure what, he didn't say anything more than that. He brought on their agenda for the for next week, so we'll try to get more details about that. Um, but that would be ideal, I think. <laughs> Um, but 
I would love to hear your opinions on it. And Jason's not here, so I can't really pick his brain. He didn't he didn't respond to the email specifically about this. I spoke to Jason about this a little bit and yeah, we kind of need to coordinate a little bit more about what is the village doing, what they're capable of doing, what is the specific ask uh, for public for our public works team before they he really knows whether he has time for it or not. It it's certainly not something that's that he has said he needs to rule out. It's he's a, something that he needs more information about. Yeah. Hey, bro. Did we run this through our insurance? Just make sure the five at this time we haven't really done anything with it. Um, just to clarify, what are you asking about the insurance? If we were to do work just or liability, do you know for having some or just having things on the bridge like okay, that? Yeah, that's, that's right. a basic question. And what height would it be? Well, it looks like it's all coming from the it, right, top. but if you're underneath, is it 13 foot? 13.6. Yeah, okay. So if you're under 13.6, there has to be more posting for anybody that's running well, equipment. Hog trucks, one of them. I, I'm asking the requester. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't measure the height. I didn't measure the width. <laughs> you think it's higher than that six, that 13.6? Well, it has to be higher, but when you hang something that hangs down yeah, I understand. is it adds four that, inches or five inches or whatever but uh, it, it'll yeah. depend on what it is and where we hang it how much it adds but we should know what how close we are to the yeah. 13 six and know how much we have to play with what is what did you need from us i think it's i think it's a beautiful and lovely idea yes it's our bridge so we at the very least have to you know, show some support for the, the project to happen on our bridge. You know, even if the village agrees to do all the work and pay for the, you know, run the lift and everything, it's still our, our property. So we have to at the very least start there. Our sidewalk too. Not our sidewalk. We don't want sidewalks. So, okay, so we could do a couple of things. We could, wait until we hear whether the village approves theirs. We could have a contingent motion, contingent on village and also contingent on findings about what the requirements would be for hanging this. That would be my guess, is to make it contingent. And, and we can address Eric's concern too. Yeah. He, about the I, mean, we, yep. I have no problems with it, yeah. but I just would like to make sure that our insurance company is buying it. And they probably are. And as long as it's up to code, I mean, it needs to be contingent on the, it meets high, high requirements and whatnot. And this is a historic structure, right? Yeah. 140 feet, here's the end, and a width of 23 feet, but then it gets the, the height. No. Well, it's just, I mean, what, 13, eight or something? It's usually 13, six. It's, you know, yeah. I think it seems like a it would be a cool thing. I can't help but wonder if visually if something like this would be better off on Pearl Street, where there's already I wire. That would be very quick for the village. There's no guide wire. There's a lamp post. Six of them or nine. Oh, well, what are they? What that are they banner with the banner, banner, banner on Pearl Street. Oh, what we need. Yeah, so Something like already. this with the lights and the flags would be much more visible. We already know. Okay, what do we want to do? Let's keep moving. What do we want to do? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve this project contingent on insurance and village participation. And what measurements, that and that it's allowed by clearance, clearance, med, yeah, whatever code would need to be. Could you elaborate on village participation? <laughs> <laughs> As they have described here in this 
which the the village will so um, your motion is contingent upon the village hanging and removing the flag and lights <laughs> and now i didn't kill it because um it's they've got 450 dollars to pay the village if the village box really bad Donna, do you yes. have a clear motion? I, I, I think I do, yes, to approve the project contingent on uh, the village agreeing to remove the flags and lights and uh, insurance, and, and that it is allowed by whatever transportation goes. Yeah. So install and remove. I think it, we need to have the install and remove. Yeah, the guys that are hanging in. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any discussion? Uh, Kyle, go ahead. Funny. <laughs> so, if I go to the village next week and they say we're not doing the work, then the whole plan is killed, or can we? The motion is killed, and we want to come back. We want to come back, guys. Okay, so that's so, motion. But we'll be merged by then. I don't. I don't know <laughs> if this is, would help or not. I mean, uh, as far as the town highway crew is concerned, I, I think one of the village issues is going to be traffic control. Um, so if we could help with by supporting in-kind services for traffic control, that seems to be a pretty simple and easy thing that we could do that would help enable the village to do that project. Uh, okay, hold on, hold that thought, Scott. Yeah, I, I just wanted to touch base on this too. With manipulating a, a bucket truck within steel cage, basically this bridge, and having traffic control for them to swing their their bucket left and right, it's going <clears> to <throat> sort of utilize the whole bridge deck. It's a fairly good sized truck. It's a very small deck. So if the village is giving a little bit of pushback, that it's sort of a hard one to pull off. It is. And there might be some time here where the road does have to be closed completely for them to swing the bucket over, because you're not allowed to have a bucket in the air over track. So it, it is a little, it, it's not an easy task. It seems like it would be very easy, but it's not. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Yeah, Eric, underneath. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Eric. Maybe this good question for Scott. Are they able to manipulate that bucket at, at that height limit? Yeah, they should be able to put it right off the ground. Okay, yeah. and not because I know the the uh, they have a small they have a small so, truck, that's what okay probably okay for sure but it, it's just you know know that the bridge might have to be shut down for traffic. Um, to complete the, the strand. So it would almost be easier to do um, do it with harnesses and rope up at the top and just have somebody run the steel, which is would be done a little bit more efficiently, but I don't think anybody in the town has any ability to is qualified for it. Rope access for it. You wouldn't get me. Mark just volunteered. <laughs> well, I am certified and I would charge like huge money, way over 500 bucks, so now I'm not under budget. <laughs> Fair enough, Brian. I uh, I was just agreeing with Scott that uh, I think that operating the bucket underneath the, for lack of a better term, roof created by the bridge, yeah. is more challenging than it appears at first. Um, Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Do you have clarity, Kyle? It's not our plan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Greg? Hey, if you get that JD guy on the end of your row. Yeah, JD Benford. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Top. It's pretty so freaking scary. Yeah. I bet he's climbed that for him. He's late. Okay, we need to see his in proof of insurance. <laughs> and then he's to clear the insurance. <laughs> he's incredible. Um, that actually might not be a bad way to spend five the $500 <laughs> in your village budget. Um, he's a scaler. He scales. Okay. Oh yeah. 
now that JD has a plug for business. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor. Uh, let's go ahead and vote. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Okay, ayes have it. Did you vote down here? I did. Okay, good. That's unfortunate. There we are. Okay, right. number four, Next racial up. justice and social equity committee, uh, committee mission statement. What page is that? that is page 19. So a mission statement provided by the racial justice and social equity committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is basically the same deal that you Adopted it and sending it to us for approved, final approval. Correct. Is there any discussion? It looks or? good to me. It's long winded. It's very long, and a lot of them are examples, I guess, similar to the beautification committee. Um, what is an example? Right, for educational you know, opportunities, that part. You know, pledging to uphold, that's an activity, um, which is fine. Um, and promote awareness by providing free educational. You know, the beautification committee, we shortened it to pride in the community. And I actually think their first sentence is right to the point. Um, but what's the rest of the board think? Yeah, like first paragraph sort of. I guess, yeah, you can call it a paragraph. It's more a sentence. Sure. It's both, actually. It's a pair Gram sentence. Grammatically, it's both. It's a centigraph. Mm -hmm. the, the, the last sentence also could be a mission statement in and of itself. I do agree that, like in the second paragraph, if you put a period after awareness, eliminate free educational opportunities, public displays, blah, blah, blah. They did all the work. <clears throat> I know, but we just had this conversation about another mission statement. No, no I, that's why I said, we're going to put a period after awareness. Okay. Donna, would you like to speak? Um, so, just to clarify, is the suggestion to trim the second paragraph uh, by ending at promote awareness? Yes. So, that's where I, what I'm hearing. Yep. I mean, that's. There was some discussion about that in the meeting as well. And I think that um, <laughs> I think still capture the intent and direction of where we're wanting to go. That wasn't clear to me. That you, you do want to keep that last part in? Of what well, I mean, we voted on it after a lot of workshopping. So my personal preference would be to keep it in. However, if uh, getting it passed and leaving out the second half of that paragraph, then I think it's still really consistent with the direction of what we're trying to accomplish. Doesn't matter to me. I, mean. I think we should be consistent if we're going to approve mission statements personally. Margo? Yeah, I was, I was in the conversation about like comparison of mission statements, and I think that the mission statement is something like a beautification committee and perhaps is concise as it was made by now. I don't know, diluting or, or leaving out important aspects. Comparing it to a mission statement such as this, I think it's all not like apples and oranges, but uh, that's not a direct comparison. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking just over the years of, I was not at this meeting and uh, I haven't been at the guest this year, Jeff, for sure. Um, but there's been questions in town like around this. I think if we can, that the mission statement can include like the steps or, or the opportunities, it's a person who reads the mission statement, it's like, it's all right there. There's, there's no question. 
Whereas, you know, sorry, Kyle, but with the mission statement, <laughs> lots of flowers and such important. And, but I think that is clear in, you know, the beautification of the town. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm fine with keeping it the way they, they did the work. Um, I feel like there's a difference between a mission statement, goals, and a vision. Like they all complement each other. Um, the buy, like I get, I get why you had so much discussion around the word buy and like what you would want to get out of buy. I just, the one thing that doesn't quite sit with me is, does this restrict you too much? Does it shape the possibility, you know, unintentionally? So I kind of like not having the words by after, for that reason. Um, so ending with period after the awareness? Yeah, I like the idea of ending the, yeah, and removing the last, half of the second paragraph, but keeping the other pieces personally. Because I think that if you wanted to have goal, like if you wanted to have annual goals or even goals forever or a vision forever, you could accommodate some of that. Yeah, I, I think the third sentence of our work is to produce, uh, is to educate ourselves. That goes a lot towards the buy. That's the vision. Yeah. Yeah. So then let's let's do that. Let's put the period after aware awareness. I'll make that motion. We accept this mission statement as amended by putting period after awareness and eliminating the last part of that second paragraph sentence. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? But you're leaving the third paragraph. Yes. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second discussion, Scott. Yeah, um, just on the first paragraph, and I'm a firm believer in having a conversation that's sort of uh, more kind. You know, let's work on this together. And uh, I'm wondering, it seems it seems a little um, bit of a a challenge. I'm not even sure that's the right word. Where it says and to disrupt and actively change the press existence. I get that, but is there a kind of way to put that out there? So if you do have somebody who's entrenched in the community that they don't see this as a challenge. Is it is there just a a more reasonable way to reverse that part of the Margo? Um, okay, you, yeah. but, uh, um, you know, when I read to disrupt and actively change, I see that as a positive statement. I don't see it as a negative statement. That's a what? A positive statement, but it's, you know, it, it, but it's, it's not contextually, it is not a negative statement. Yeah, so it's consistent with the, um, value statements that we have on the lot of the stairs in terms of a lot of discussion when we adopted that about the word resist or oh, right or reject and so it's consistent with that like it's rejecting anything that does suppress or um limit anyone I, I, yeah i just don't agree with the with them. well we would love okay we have a we have an active motion and we hear differing opinion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor with the motion? As amended. As amended. You amended the motion? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I missed it. I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Ayes have it. Okay, next up, um, the social media racial justice committee request. We're we doing that or committee appointments? No, we're doing that first. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, committee appointments. Okay, sorry, committee appointments. Yes, please. Great. 
we have received uh, two interested parties for the Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee. Um, what page? We don't have them on a uh, page. Uh, we have uh, Jackie Stenton, who has the support of the committee, uh, has met with the committee, has attended regular meetings. And we have uh, John O'Keefe, who has served on a number of other committees. She's still on the application? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah another valuable member, and we have two open seats. Two open seats. Yep. Two open seats. Okay. Were these, were these posted? Yep. Jeff? Um, Brian, are you, if you're not going to, I'd like to read uh, Sophie's uh, statement of support for Jackie. Please go ahead. Um, Jackie's been a non voting member of the Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee since its formation in 2020, instrumental in the creation of the committee itself. She's attended every single meeting. A track record better than some of our voting members throughout the years. She's extremely adept at researching relevant data, keeping the committee informed on local news and events, and inspiring many of the motions which the committee takes. Jackie's a devoted participant who's proven to be an integral part of the committee and a passionate community member dedicated to serving Johnson and our mission to create a more just and socially equitable town. The Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee unanimously recommends Jackie Stan to serve on this committee. Uh, that was actually two meetings ago that we passed that motion unanimously. And I would just add, like, more than anyone who's a voting member currently, she does the work. Puts a whole lot of work in a lot of time. But, um, the only thing I'd like to say, just in terms of Donna, I'm sure she's amazing. She has not sent anything in writing for us to review. She has not appeared before us to have any conversation with us. So we make no recommendation on that guy. How long are these appointments for? Until they are no longer. Infinity. No, like Supreme Court just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, first buzz making that statement. Are you saying that you would like to be able to interview her? Because I think that's part of our process is that the committee interviews uh, and makes a recommendation. That has been our understanding of the whole process. Um, we were not allowed to vet a round of candidates a year or so ago or a few weeks ago, um, but it would certainly be our preference and it is our understanding that that is normal process. That is, that is our policy, right? So let's, let's um, put forward Jackie and encourage the committee to interview other applicants. Do we have a motion? Yes, we do. That, that we appoint Jackie Stan to the Racial Justice Committee. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second? Any discussion? Bearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. So you have an open seat. Shall we post again? And maybe point Jana to the committee, to Jeff and Sophie, and they can. Awesome. You? Okay. Uh, next up is social media requests from the, the Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee. Do we have that in here yet? No, we don't have that. The packet was made up before okay. that. <clears throat> I'm pulling up, but the context, the uh, Racial Justice and, and Social Equity Committee uh, had forwarded a request to me to make a posting to social media that was uh, it was originally in, in in its first draft form, I thought pretty clearly in violation of our social media policy. Uh, they went back and did some more work on it to a point where it was uh, something that I, I sent to the whole board to for discussion at, at this meeting of, of do we want to 
do we think that violates our social media policy or not? Uh, and the committee has asked for more clarification to help with this in, in future discussions also. Can you please read it? Yep. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come up when I'm at the town. Don't you hate me? I hate this internet here. More. <laughs> Did you see their proposed yeah. budget? <laughs> All right. So uh, the proposed. A revision. Uh, okay, the proposed statement would be in light of recent attacks on reproductive rights in the courts and in the legislatures around the country, it is crucial to protect these rights for all. These attacks affect all pregnant persons' fundamental rights to access reproductive health and will have a disproportionately adverse impact on BIPOC and populations living in poverty. And it then contains a link to a uh, National Institute of Health article on the same. What's our social media policy statement? Our social media policy. All right, it's going to take me a second to switch. So the, the issue with the original one that we created was that it was asking people to vote a specific way on this article, which that honestly, like we just weren't thinking about the social media policy. So when Brian came back with that, I was like, no, that's, that's a good point, actually. But in keeping with the to advocate, um, we that's why we proposed this revision where we're saying just asking people as they vote to keep in mind that uh restrictions on reproductive health do have a disproportionately adverse impact on um racial minorities as well as uh, people in lower socioeconomic status. Yeah, uh, as, as demonstrated by known uh, radical institution, the National Institute for Health. So our social media policy uh, cites inappropriate content content is one of the things that you're not allowed to post on official channels. And it gives political postings as an example of inappropriate content. Um, the call to action about requesting a vote or people to vote in a specific way was pretty clearly a political action. Um, a statement of belief is less clear, uh, which is why it got sent out. It's less clear than asking for a specific vote, but it is a statement of belief. Certain people that would be essentially supported by the town by putting it on town's social media policy or social media streams. So if there was a similar item but it was on a different topic i guess the question would be whether you agree with it or not would it be appropriate for the town social media to be the display case i guess I never thought of this, what's town sponsored uh, media outlets. You know, they're there for relaying information on what's happening in the town, things that we're doing or we're not going to do, things that are going on, but taking on state or national issues, I don't think that was the intent of our Facebook page or website social media. depends on the entity right because our racial justice and social equity has a mission statement <laughs> that mission statement is 
against oppression and support communities that need additional support. So I say that because um, I think that our town channels and our select board <clears throat> statement is one thing. I think it is a different thing if we have a committee that has a mission statement and the statement they want to pour, uh, put out supports their mission. I think that's a little bit different, um, personally, my personal opinion. I do think it needs to be worded in a way that speaks back to the to the mission statement, though, if something is what if something controversial or potentially controversial is going to put out be put out there. Scott? Yeah, I was just wondering, have we checked with the League of Cities accounts? Because I mean it's a pretty good topic, and I probably would assume other accounts are Look at the potential of doing something like this. Have we checked or called or? No, there there hasn't been any. We we haven't sought advice from BLCT or anybody else about this. Don't you think that might be sort of a wise idea? I I think at this stage it's really a question about our policy, which we our social media policy is based on the BLCT policy, but. Um, I don't. Well, I think there's a difference between social media usage and a statement being made, right? Because this is, a, we need to abide by our social media policy, yes. And also, what are the ramifications of making a statement? Greg? I wonder. I mean, the vote on this thing's tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, it might be a little unnecessary to uh, create some um, bad will from some people or, you know, controversy, like you were saying. And I would recommend tabling until the next meeting to see what the vote comes out of us. So if, if it votes no, then maybe it's a good idea to have our town be different, but I do believe it's probably going to pass, and that kind of covers what you're trying to do anyway, isn't it? It does, um, and I agree that it's probably going to pass, and it is, you know, the eleventh hour, perhaps a bit more in terms of wasn't something well aware of that, painfully aware of that. Um, but uh, I think it's it's we wanted to still bring it forward um, as a sort of part of the larger question. Um, because a lot of our mission, you know, as we see it about educating and bringing issues to light, um, could be seen or taken as inherently political. Um, and it is, you know, yeah, as, it was, uh... as inherently political. Um, and so I guess what we're looking for is all right, if perhaps not on the town social media page, then maybe um, having a separate social media channel. Our understanding has been. You know, as committee members, if we post something, you know, like on our own social media, that we like, I don't want to put something online saying this is from this committee and right. then have that be a foul of that policy. So I think that's at this stage more of what we're hoping for. It's like clarification, the bigger picture, you know. So if there's a vote that comes up about something else and we want to put information about this is the impact that we we believe this could have on people in Johnson are experiencing this. Uh that we sort of already have an idea of where those dark areas fall for us as a committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Megan Wayne, your your reading on that is correct with the intent of the social media policy that right. you should not be posting on personal pages to represent you know, your town function as part of the committee. Right. Um, you could post your own personal opinion on your personal page, but you couldn't represent that on your personal page that this was right. a committee. Yeah. yeah, so you, you're using that one very correctly. Right. Um, um, at the ex 
potential expense of, well, I'm just gonna share my personal opinion. My personal opinion is, I think that there is data that supports the statement that's being made. I think referring back to that data, you know, and referring in some way to the mission statement of the social justice committee is appropriate. Personally, I think it's appropriate. Um, I also want to make sure that we're protecting the town any way we can. Uh, so I think it, well, first of all, thank you for coming to us with this because it's a hard topic and it's a hard thing to work through. Um, I would like to make sure that we're not stepping in something we can't step out of. Um, and also I very much want to support the committee in this. Um, that being said, what I would like to see is I would like to see a little bit of, if this moves forward, I would like to see a little bit of text added around, you know, as the racial justice and social equity committee, um, we support the findings of whatever, like wherever the data comes from. Um, in, you know, and then talk about your statement to that effect. You know, you you can organize it however you'd like, but you get to my point. Yeah, and what I'm, I, what I'm hearing you say is sort of a template where it would refer to our mission, refer to findings that are from research, you know, fact-based, and then so that it's giving the scaffolding and structure of this is about bringing information to the light that we can support and help you inform as opposed to requesting you as a town committee to vote a certain way. Yeah, exactly. And I think that I think too that running something like this, I'm just one person, so I'm not gonna speak for the whole board. So the board should definitely weigh in. But I think too that given the committee's role and what your mission actually is, having a direct line to the league and working on interpreting the conversation with Brian at times, but sometimes just directly the league is very appropriate. Um, and probably warranted quite often, I would imagine. But what are the thoughts of others? Does anyone disagree with anything I said? It's okay if you do. I'm human. You're not going to have a heart attack. <laughs> nope. I, <laughs> I, 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 I agree fundamentally with what you said. I, I would like any statement that ends up on the town social media platform to be as neutral and fact-based as possible. Um, so just as, as an example, when I read in light of recent attacks, I would say in light of recent actions, because attack as a connotation to me that's inherently political, as, as you said, where I think action, you know, the Supreme Court took an action. And, and, you can read it. Different people can read it different ways, but they took an act. Um, and, you know, I, you're saying that it will have a disproportionate adverse impact on black population, populations. Probably it will, but would it be, you know, more appropriate to say something that I can will likely have? Um, so I don't know. Those are those are sort of my thoughts. I'm trying to center it in a little bit on something like or, or has still powerful or has historically right because yeah. if there's data behind it, there's yeah. already data out there. So has historically had an impact on yeah, that. Yeah, could easily be. Yeah. Racist doing over there. What do you? Think? Oh, are you ready? Thank you. I've just. Thank you open the door and start down a slippery slope taking on one uh, very polarizing political issue where might something in the future come no, no matter what what we if we take a position any position like that uh, 
half the people are going to be happy with it, and the other half are not, and it's going to be very polarizing within the community. I don't think that's really the purpose of our sort of our media outlets that we need. For the town specifically. For the town. I mean, if racial justice had their own Facebook page, I think that's very appropriate. But I think for us in representing all the people. But it wouldn't not. be from the select board. True, but it's on our page and it will be seen as speaking for the town. That's that's my thoughts. Could we have a disclaimer? <laughs> <laughs> that is not the not the mayor's not the view of the select board. Views of the select <laughs> board. It's, you know, purely the views of the racial justice committee. Well, it's going to represent the views of the select board because we're going to vote one way or the other. Either it's going to pass or not pass. Yeah. Well, the request, the, the request, the the ballot item. The I, ballot I, we're already voting. It's either in the mail or at the office. Right. Or that, tomorrow. That, or it's in that we're, And that we're trying to. We're trying to step away from that, that political vote that's happening. Yes. <clears throat> Whether it passes or not doesn't matter to me on this issue. I agree with Greg. I think it'll pass overwhelmingly, but that's neither here. It'll pass overwhelmingly in Johnson. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, so the question is what the question is the social media posts. Right. Is social media posts from a committee that we appointed and this is their job? I think it can be modified in a way that Beth was talking about <clears throat> that I'm supportive of. I tend to agree with Eric. It's a very polarizing topic. And the town really doesn't have the liberty of allowing it now and not later. Um, was there a study done on how many people in the Johnson community it would affect, or is this just a going out at a national issue because there are national issues every day but you are the johnson facial justice and social equity committee fair point um you know the data is at the national level and that's why we're looking at the national data um this specific voting issue i mean that's a that's a state thing right um, but it's certainly anything that happens at the state level has a, obviously a significant impact on the town um and people vote on a town and town basis. Um, and we did want to, you know, to bring forward some education or some information on the ballot as it came for us. Um, Are we skirting around an issue here? Like, does racial justice, I'm just going to call you racial justice for the sake of not having to say too many words constantly. <laughs> um, but does racial justice just need social media accounts? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I feel like that appeases all of the requests that are out there, maybe. Every committee could have their own Facebook page and they could post content that they thought was appropriate. A lot of them do. Historical yeah. Society has their They own. certainly do, yeah. Uh, Rep Committee has their own. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't run it by us at all. No. I don't know if the that's tree board like does. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an appropriate solution, do you think, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to speak for everyone without bringing it back, but I think that's a thing. Yeah. Still, your original okay. request would have been, if we can't ask a voter to vote one way or another, but it would be an outlet where you could post. Yeah, it, it would still have to abide by our general social media policy, but uh, yeah. I, yeah, right. So it would still not be, you know, sort of asking to vote a certain huge way or think a certain way. It would be saying, as the committee, this mission is this, this is information we think is important for this issue because of how it would impact people in Johnson. If I can. Something along that line. I, I think that that sounds like a good idea. I would encourage you to still message at least maybe myself or, or better a couple of board members about you know what do you think about this like is, is this does this fit or not yeah i recognize that we're not exactly starting this discussion with like yeah the topic in general too right um but that's just kind of how it came out and it, you know again i apologize i feel like it's on us like i was at the meeting where we adopted that social media policy and i just forgot that we had one 
It's okay. I actually prefer to device a divisive issue that comes up anyway because it makes it easier in the long run. Greg? I just like to see it more trending. And you know, I think I heard the word radical. Did I hear that? Well, I was joking about the National Institutes of Health. Oh, so it's not in the statement? No. No. Because, you know, radical is not in the statement. Not device. That's that's what we need to do. And it's not just this town, but the state, the whole country, everybody fighting and arguing and punching people and breaking into their houses. Just I, you know, I support what you're doing, Jeff, and your committee, but there's words that are inviting to bring people in. And I think I think that's the way this town should be. Uh, let's be maybe maybe we don't agree with whoever, but that doesn't mean we got to throw them out on the side of the street, you know. So I hope in the future that you know we can make this friendly. I mean, you're gonna have issues that are tough. I agree, but I think there's a way to word it that I invite people to want to learn it more. Than, you know, that's. I guess that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. What do we have? Yeah. I think that, okay, so here's what I have social media account set up. We'll have to amend our policy to make that an official. Uh, if we're amending policies, please reach out to the heads of every committee that doesn't have one and ask them if they want one. Yeah. Beautification of that one. Hopefully, uh, we have a distribution list. Oh, yeah. one, see? Okay. I'm right up on it. They do have one. Yeah, yep. they do. Um, so let's get that set up. We also need to establish a link with BLCT. Is it out in my head? Make sure I have the acronym correct. Um, Jeff, do you mind taking an action on that one and just following up to make sure that you get a proper connection there and that we're covered in making that, if you don't mind, hugely helpful. And then on divisive issues, just bringing them before getting put when social media is established, bringing them and getting feedback before the post to the event catastrophe that is sure to happen. Um, and then on this particular issue, removing the word attack was a request. Um, referencing mission and referencing the fact-based data was a request. And I think it should probably just get um, some VLCT eyes on it after we establish that connection too. Um, Did I miss anything? Do are you, would you like the board to take a specific action tonight with regard to this proposed item? Or is the guidance you've been given sufficient to deal with the issue? I think the guidance is sufficient to help us move forward. I don't. So with the caveat that I'm speaking for myself, Mm -hmm. Not meaning, not intending to represent everyone. I don't think that there, I think the value of this discussion is to help us move forward. I don't think we're still trying to get this out in front of people for like tomorrow morning. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's an impossible task. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly hearing no on the, using the town's Facebook page. So to get something sort of spawn off with the other input would be unrealistic at this point, but it's a huge help in terms of forward. Awesome. So, yeah. So I would say I we so, either yeah. table the table or we'll wait, no we'll wait to see if you want to come back to us with a statement or not. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I do have some clarification. Okay. What exactly are we seeking from BLCT. If they come back with a statement, just making sure that B BLCT is helping us navigate the potential issues that could come up this statement and whether or not we are putting ourselves in liability in any in a at a in a position of risk in any way. Okay. 
Right. So we're, we're that's there. it, but we're not there yet. We don't have a statement yet. Yeah. Because that's going to go back. And if they come back, then that's the cool. Adjourn. I know we need to keep moving. Okay. We slowed down. Jeff, are you good? A lot. Okay, awesome. I apologize. I do. I like this. All right. Property casualty quotes. Uh, I have just have an update on this. Uh, I sent out to the board and I wanted to make it a little bit more public that the, the in a previous meeting, I had said that we had a lead with Hickok and Boardman. Hickok and Boardman returned an, an email stating that they were not going to provide us with an alternative quote, that they would not be able to be price competitive. Um, another organization, NFP, is, has expressed some interest. Uh, I've filled out some questionnaires for them and have not yet heard back. Uh, passive uh, would like to come to make a presentation or they can just submit a written proposal. NFP is not a carrier. NFP is a group of insurance agencies. They basically buy out insurance agencies. They own a lot of insurance agencies. A lot of different locations. So they're just going to go and put a comparative rate. They're going to go use a comparative rater or something of that mechanism. They're going to get the same results back that whoever you got results back from before. Take our comportment. Yep. They're going to get the same results back. They're going to get results back from travelers. They're going to get the big ones, you know, maybe State yeah. Farm, some of the big ones, but we're going to have the same result. So you get a quote from Passive. I'm comfortable with that. I know they already are. Uh, do we want them to come and present or do we just want written? I would say at this point in the game, you've done enough. I mean, you're, you filled out a questionnaire for NFP. If they come back with a quote and you get to have a quote from passive, we can make a decision and move on. If we only have one quote from passive, we can move on. So written. Written proposal. Great. Okay. Just... All right. Um, I'm going to re reiterate my comment from several meetings. Ago. I thought we were getting out of this one easy. I, I would just <laughs> encourage you to look carefully at the billing schedule. Yep. And because that's going to have, you know, that's going to have a huge impact on the moment. They did hit us pretty hard on the Holcomb House last year. Okay. Um, review <laughs> and select the salt contracts. All right, so the, the our two <laughs> options are Cargill and Compass. Compass is who we went with last year. Cargill uh, has the state contract. These are on packet page 28. And we got all the salt that we could possibly get. Very disappointed. Prices. Yep. We made a very good decision, I think, to buy out the remainder of our contract. Uh, at the prices we had last year, so that there is a there's a very good chance that we will uh, not actually use any salt except what we have in stock this year. Can I just ask a question. I yep. want these the delivery fee, the delivery cost for Cargill is ninety one dollars for six hundred ten funds. The delivery without equipment for compass mineral, same quantity, cost of $89.38. Does that, do they both not include that that's equipment? Price per ton. Yeah, they just dump it. I understand, but I'm just asking, is there a delivery fee associated with either of these that we're not seeing? Or is it built into their um, price per unit? It is built into their price per unit. They they effectively deliver the same way that they. And there's no additional charges when they deliver. No. Okay. Well, let's cross our fingers that we only need 300 tons of salt. What do we have? What do we have on hand right now? I uh, just use. I, I couldn't tell you offhand, but our our. Public Works Group believes that under with a normal winter, we will only need to use the salt that we have in the ship. Yeah, we've got enough right now to cover. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is minimum buy? 
Nope, neither of these are asking for a minimum by. Um, in compass of who, who, the, who we went with last year. year. They're the ones out of Canada. What was the cost last year? That I don't have offhand. What was it? Six. 60. So, yeah, it was a lot. Less. If we look fifty percent increase, if we contract with the compass again, just for a safety net, if we don't order anything. There's no penalty. Yep, and it might. We'll see what conditions are like once our once we're getting low. Whether we want to order during the year or near the end of the year, you know, do we want to pop up again? as a safety net before for next year. Uh, there's also a lot of towns are having trouble getting salt at all right now. Uh, yeah. We talked about this last year. Is it actually beneficial if we um, like co-op with other, ta other towns? That's really what they're doing. The Cargill. Yeah. It's not any uh -huh. statements. It's the whole state. Cargill is the state. Uh, you would think as much as they're selling, to the state alone, and they're passing on that same rate to the town. I would motion to accept the proposal from Compass Minerals. Do you have a second? Second. Um, with okay, hurry up, go. The encouragement of ordering salt early if we need it, because the railroad strike is heavily going to affect us. That doesn't need to be part of your motion. Okay, we have a motion. Any other discussion? Was that part of your motion? Or? No, it was just a recommendation after the fact. Yeah, just conversation. Okay. Uh, another conversation. Did someone all second it? it? Yeah. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just so you know, if we fulfill that contract, we'll be like 20 grand over just on salt. Yeah. So hopefully we don't. Nothing Request a direct change for a private road elimination. All right. So this is a very interesting one. It's for all... Wait Farm Road. So Roy and Marsha Marble would just like their address changed from Wait Farm Road to Dukes Road. Yes, that's the effect. They would also like us to eliminate Wait Farm Road or Waitman Farm Road. As a town highway. Do so they own all the land around private. it? They do own all the land around it, and it appears to be a private road. It is not on our uh, schedule of roads. Then why, did, why do we have any thing? It's a private road. Uh, you want it to change the name of the road? If it's 911, there's two or more residents on it, you have to have name. There's only one. I really don't know how this got created in the is first place. Is there two lots? Is there multiple lots that they own, or is it all one? Uh, I don't. I don't remember if they doesn't exist. There is a survey that proposes how to divide up their farm. I don't believe that they actually did divide it up, but that survey includes yeah, a. Do. Proposed right of way roads to access all the parks. That's not this. So, this really has no connection to anything. Um, and it's a real oddity as to why it exists. So, why do you recommend we do it? Eliminate it and change their address to Duke's Road. Okay. I move that we eliminate it and change their address to Duke's Road. Do you have a second? <laughs> No second? All second. All those. Okay, any discussion? I would get on the roads. She used to name them by ways. It's a list that, that she did because. This was Waitman Farm. Yeah, you know, it was probably some division area. So she thought there could be more than two residents on that road. So there are two parcels that this hey, right road. Back, right back. Well, there are two parcels that this road appears to go through. Like, for what like it's do hard. they not both have frontage on Dukes Road? They do. All right, problem solved. Just saying. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Uh, um, yeah. Scott, go ahead. Mm -hmm. The E911 thing came up to the address, but are, are we taking a private <clears throat> road turning into a town highway? Is that what no. You have? no, it is currently a private road. 
and they want it eliminated and in large part because this is such an odd case i wanted to make sure that there was a because there is no public record about how this was created i want mm -hmm. there to at least be some kind of public record that we were eliminating well, a 911 database say what it is. So, at least I when it's created. See. It was created in 2010. But look, it's right. 2010. And Thanks. We're okay. sure it goes no into two properties, two parcels, parcels owned by two different people. And nobody else has this is owned by. No one else has an address. Marble. And yeah. the and two lots that are connected to it no, both have funded on Duke's Road. Yeah. But they're, they're asking, hang on, what's their address? Uh, they're trying to sell their property yeah, and they, they were very upset to discover this one. Well, I shouldn't say very upset because I, I see. Yep, it was Waitman Farm Road and they were actually seemed a little surprised to see it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So there are two parcels. Just to be clear, there are two parcels owned by two different piece, people. James Fitzgerald and Company and Roy Marble and Company. They both have multiple owners on it. Um, so it does go through two parcels owned by two people. However, when you look at the parcel of your, you literally don't see a road. You just see where a road in theory would be. It crosses through trees. So just to, you know. But they both have frontage on Duke's Road anyways. Yeah, one is a house with frontage on Duke's Road. The other is... I don't even see a house. The other is just a parcel of land. But a real, a real issue here is whether or not the other people have a mailing address, which is Whiteman Farm Road. And if they do, I don't think we can change. Both parcels have a mailing address on the parcel that is not in Johnson. They're both in Morseville. <clears throat> just to make things more confusing. Yes, Morseville kind of reaches over into that area. <laughs> Well, the, 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 the post water. office is served by Marsville, not John. Right. No, it's it, not. The owners live in Marsville. The owners live in Marsville. That's why. The owners of these two parcels of land both have mailing addresses in Marsville. Just on Uber Hill, they want for a week or later. No. <laughs> well, I was trying to figure out why Whiteman Farm Road was up on Duke's Road. Okay, we have a motion. And we have a second. And we have a second. Wait, 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 wait. Is there any other clarifying questions or do we want to vote? I want to vote. Yeah, let's do it. Clarifying question? Okay. I don't know. Tell, tell, me, it. tell me it's giving you heartburn. It is. It's giving it's me heartburn. heartburn. That makes me feel better. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor of saying aye. 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 And all those opposed? It's okay. Just do it. You can vote. Right? Nobody's going to be angry at you. I'm not going to vote. But I'm going to vote. I don't know. Abstain. 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 Okay. Duncan's vote with the president. Perfect. <laughs> okay, next up. Um, review the... Where did it? Oh, I have one more. Sorry, I do have you one more. Oh, I, I have to say this because it's just planning the next meeting. I just want to confirm whether folks want to land for the ATV meeting, whether you want to land on... The 28th or the, or the Thursday or Monday. Okay. You, you what? Did you send out a doodle? I did. Google Can't we book? do one on like December 25th? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Sure. It'll be a good yeah. crowd that right day. The 28th of November and December 1st. And oh, it's now the 28th. And the December 1st. But why'd you vote you yes? Somewhere yeah. warm here. You, no, you, you might did. have. Because there was five for five on that day. That's I true. didn't vote at all. Technology you. and your generation. I voted for the first. Monday, the November 28th, or Thursday, December 1st. You're saying the first? Yeah. Duncan, does December 1st work for you? Good question. It was Whatever. a Google December. survey. Powered by Google. Which date? Which date? Everyone is Thursday. Which dates did you select? Um, I mean, and I guess I can make it work. Yeah. Okay, the first it is. First at 6 30. December 1st. Ah. I never felt that out. Oh my gosh. Okay, meeting adjourned.
What time? Been, what time is this meeting? Six thirty. P.M. And we have a meeting um, in two days. Two days. <laughs> and we have vote voting tomorrow. And that's going to be a riveting meeting. You're riveting? not listen. Okay, actually, so before we riveting? actually before we really adjourn tomorrow, we are all volunteering at the same time. I sent Sue an email and I said, next time, can you please? have only two select board members and two village trustees, who oh, I didn't see, by the way, just two of each, so that when we're in that room together, we don't talk about things. Like literally last time we kind of votes, I said, we can't talk about this over and over and over again. Well, I'm so doing my part not going to be there. You're on the list. But I have a son that I need to take care of. Okay, well. No, we'll take care of no time business. You're about anything other than time business, okay? Unless it's just two of you. I'm trying to get adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Okay.